चेक 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 हेलो 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 माइक टेस्टिंग वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव आप ये लाइव स्टूडेंट्स लेट मी नो द कमेंट सेक्शन इफ यू आर एबल टू हियर मी एंड सी माय फेस लेट मी नो द कमेंट सेक्शन राइट नाउ बिकॉज आई डू नॉट नो बिकॉज आई कैन नॉट सी माय सेल्फ राइट नाउ सो दिस इज अ न्यू मोड ऑफ अडाप्टेशन यस बिकॉज यू सो गोपी का मैम टेकिंग क्लास लास्ट टाइम राइट एंड बिफोर दैट सो दिस वॉज अ मच मोर ऑफ पॉड सेटअप स्टूडेंट्स लेट मी नो द कमेंट सेक्शन इफ दिस इज student if i'm live i do not know if i'm live let me check in my laptop here i have laptop next to me so if i can check if i am live here oh i am live awesome students if the screen is visible to all of you and if there is no disturbance whatsoever a quick thumbs up in the chat i will be looking a lot on this side because the chat section is this side today not on top chat section is on this side hello hello let me know in the comment section if i am audible and visible to each and every one of you quickly tell me in the chat Yes, you are live. Yes, I am live to all of you, sir. PPT is in red color. No, 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 no. PPT is in normal black color itself. Put it in the chat. Now, let me ask you all a question. Usually, I start my class with a small question, right? Now, the question for today is: How many of you know what is a frog? Yes, all of you know what is a frog. A frog can undergo metamorphosis. Yes, a frog can go undergo metamorphosis. That is, a frog can develop from a tadpole. all the way to a frog that is metamorphosis but if you notice in a frog my question is still coming if you notice in a frog it has a small tail right but in a frog the tail is completely absent Do, does someone go and cut the tail no but then how does the tail vanishes which is the cell organelle which is responsible for metamorphosis quickly let me know in the chat quickly let me know in the chat which is the cell organelle responsible for metamorphosis hello sharad i know it's your birthday i saw in the morning happy birthday to you may you live long and prosper and you get everything in your life quickly tell me in the chat which is the cell organelle fast 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 which is the cell organelle which is responsible for metamorphosis quickly in the chat everyone while well, let me just check if this is writing Yes, 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 yes. Let me see the answers. No one is able to answer. What is this? The answer which I'm looking for is lysosomes. Lysosomes have this hydrolytic uh, catalyst, hydrolytic uh, enzymes, which are responsible for metamorphosis in the case of your frog. Now, let me ask you one more question. This question I usually ask in uh, body fluids and circulation, but since Gopi Kamma has taught that chapter, you should be able to answer this question very easily. which cell in the body where nucleus is completely absent quickly tell me in the chat which is the cell in the body where nucleus is completely absent in the human body tell me in the chat fast tell tell me in the chat which is the cell organelle where the entire cell right it is by concave in nature where the nucleus is completely absent tell me fast and we will start today's class and if you are enjoying the questions which i am giving you in the starting each and every one of you too each and every one of you should like the video share the video and do not forget to subscribe to the channel clear it's rbc exactly erythrocytes also called as red blood corpuscles so with that being said can we start the cell chapter can i see some josh because uh, today i have decided i'll write a lot so that all of you can make some good notes along with me and I, i know this chapter all of you might be thinking sir what is this it's a very easy chapter yes some of you might be thinking this is a very very easy chapter but students listen to me very carefully this is the chapter which actually builds the foundation it's a complete foundation for you for example in morphology you learned about different types of tissue yes complex tissue simple tissues there we also learned a mesophyll cell is you know vowel in structure but in this chapter we will look inside the cell and notice how it actually the cell looks from inside so with that being said let me show some energy show me some you know love green hearts in the chat because this chapter is a fundamental chapter for all of you with the help of this chapter right you can actually build such a solid foundation like you know your photosynthesis in high plants will become easy your human physiology will become easy so with that being said look around you everyone should look around yourself look around yourself why is the pen tab not working look around yourself quickly look, look around yourself right now what do you see around yourself right now look around yourself so if i look around myself i see a pen here 
I look at a book. I have a mic here. I have a pen. I have a writing pad here. But are all of these things living? Quickly tell me in the chat. Are all of these things living in nature? Tell me first. The answer is obviously no. Let me call someone who can help me out with the pen tab here because the pen tab is not working. One second, students. Tell me what is around you right now before I teach you the next concept because the pen is not working. So tell me first. Mithun, uh, Mithun, the pen tab is not working though. I'm live also. It was working all this while. Suddenly it stopped working now. Tell me in the chat what is around you. What is around you, crazy? Rupa, hello. The pen tab is seen. What it is. No, this was the pen he gave me. <laughs> what exactly yeah, happened? Right. Okay, while we get the pen tab, you know, proper, get it proper, I am telling you all of these things are non-living in nature. You all of you should agree with me, all of these are non-living in nature. But what about human cells? What about plant cells? Are all of these things living? You will tell me, sir, yes, sir, they are living in nature. But how do you differentiate what is living and what is non-living? I was going to write something here, but writing pad is not there. I'll tell you one simple difference. One second, students. One second. You can't get up. Suddenly, you can't get up. Mouse is you more than mouse. That's why. Why are you suddenly? This hill, this is not out. What? No, no, no. It's still there. Yeah, let's reconnect it once again. Ah, reconnect it. One second. You are live. Yes, I am live. Okay. Sorry. Writing. But it's not working properly. This collocation is here. One second. <sighs> okay, all of you wish uh, someone's. Uh, Who's it was, birthday? It was uh, Sarat, I guess. Sharat. It was Sharat's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Sharat. See, the whole entire Vedanta team is wishing you happy birthday here. What happened? Stop it. Let's see. Can we connect that? Working on this one, right? Right? Happens, you know. Very, very scared. Dialogues. These dialogues are just to, you know, say that we are doing something. Okay. I don't know why the pen is not working. Let me see. Keep it like that. It's working. Huh. It's working. Oh no, my, all my slides. But you. Uh, no, all my slides are visible to all of them. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's now working, I guess. Yeah, it's it's working. perfectly fine. Huh. Thank you yeah. so much. Okay, students, sorry. Sorry, so, not sorry. Sorry. Sorry for the minor inconvenience. Thank you, Mithun, so much for solving the technical issue. We can start the class now. Keep it going, some. Mithun, Mithun, Mithun. What is happening? No. I think it's I think we are good to go. Happy birthday. Oh yeah. So as I was saying, where were we? Can you can someone remind me where were we? All this minor inconvenience making me forget everything. Huh. So I was telling you, every single cell out there is living. So the one feature in the living cells, that is, every living organism, that is, all living organisms, that is all the living organisms are made up of cells yes they're made up of cells now students tell me in the chat do you know what is unicellular in nature what is multicellular so unicellular are the organisms which only have one cell then then we also have something called as multicellular cells which has many cells so the cells if you talk about cells can be further be classified into unicellular in nature unicellular as well as multicellular multicellular now this unicellular quickly tell me an example the example of unicellular is nothing but your bacteria yes unicellular the example is bacteria the multicellular example can be any of the multicellular kingdoms that is your 
protista from any from anything from protista it could it could be from your some of the not protista sorry it could be your plantae or animals all of them belong to multicellular like you know plants as well as animals plants and animals now what about non living things do non living things have this what about non living organisms non living things do non living things also made up of cells the answer would be obviously no sir there are no cells there are no cells that is in the case of inanimate how many of you know, know this word something called as inanimate things in the case of inanimate things there are no cell and that is why they are non living in nature that's why they are non living nature now students tell me one thing right if the, if i'm covering the entire screen somewhere in the middle please let me know chat if i'm covering the screen because i have to move aside because this is all new to me usually we take in the in the uh, in the studios but all the studios are taken up by your other exam that is je exam stupid je exam was taken all the studios we do not have any studio so your neat is kind of poor now so that's why we are doing this now if we talk about bacteria right all the way from the bacteria to the elephant all the way from the bacteria to your mighty elephant right all the way from the bacteria to the mighty elephant every single thing every single thing is made up of cells every single thing is made up of cells now can someone in the chat tell me what is actually the size of the cell now before we go to the size of the cell we need to understand a few 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 words or few concepts here such as what is a cell now right what is a cell can anyone tell me what is a cell now all of you know one basic definition of cell that is sir i have learned in my class 8th class 9th cell is the basic unit of life yes but i will give you one more small definition now i want everyone to write this definition and understand this definition only that is if you if i ask you what is a cell so you are supposed to tell me a cell the cells the cells are the smallest yes they are the smallest structures cells are the smallest structures yes cells are the smallest structures that are that are capable right that are capable of independent capable of independent existence independent existence that is a cell is a smallest structure which is capable of independent existence now when i say independent existence does the cell has to depend on some other cell to do its function no in fact every single cell that is they students please write down this definition because it's very difficult they carry out you know they carry out all the essential functions of life they carry out every essential function of life that is why that is why we call them cell is a basic fundamental that's why we call the cell forms what are cell forms cell forms the basic structure yes it forms the basic structure structural and functional unit of life let me move aside if i were to ask you what is the definition of cell which i want everyone to understand here is the cell forms here the cell forms the basic structural that is every single you know entire body is made up of cell for example if you look at a big building when you want to make a extremely big building you start by you know adding a small small bricks one brick after one brick after one brick we keep on adding and we get entire building just like how we make an entire building your entire body is like a building it's a temple and you need to add one brick by brick and that one brick is nothing but the cell here that it it forms the basic structural and functional unit of life now when i say functional unit of the life it means that entire cell is capable of self sustaining that is it can carry out all the essential functions of life that is a cell so now if you know the definition of cell please do not next time say sir cell is a unit of life 
do not say that please say the definition that is self forms the basic structural and functional unit of life so with that we start the cell chapter now now when we talk about cell theory now there is something called a cell theory now what is a cell theory cell theory is nothing but there are many scientists there are many scientists who told the cell is this so cell is that left side or right side tell me first are you able to see the notes students tell in the chat right now are you able to see the notes or are you not able to see the notes do i need to move this side or that side i don't know here the chair is there i cannot move this side i'll go hit the wall otherwise now cell theory is actually a theory given by many scientists there are many scientists who worked on different different uh, you know cells different plants animals and they came up with a theory now before you understand the entire cell theory i want everyone to understand there was a eminent scientist there was an eminent scientist called as robert Hooke. how many of you heard of this this small smart uncle how many of you heard about robert hook now robert hook hook was the first scientist robert hook was the first scientist who actually saw cells he actually saw cells here now this robert hook right did he see living cells or dead cells tell me in the chat this robert hook actually saw dead cells he was a scientist who saw the dead cells now where did he observe these dead cells where did he find dead cells did he find the cell did he kill the cell and then he observe it the answer is no sir he did not kill any cell then where did he obtain this dead cell from the dead cell which he actually observed was nothing but a cork cell nothing but a cork cell but a cork cell now let me tell you a small secret let me tell you a small secret about this robot hook which is not given in your ncrt a small secret about robot hook is the cell right he did not actually observe the cells he actually did not observe the cells robot hook actually observed cell wall that is he observed cell wall cell wall enclosing spaces left by dead proto last that is this robot hook did not actually observe the cells cork cells in fact he actually observed the cell wall enclosing a space now this space was previously had living cells that is the protoplast was there now one of the protoplast had died that is the, the leftover space and the cell wall was actually observed by the robot hook now there was one more scientist right there was one more scientist called as your anton let me write down then i say his name and just check the spelling students if the spelling is correct this one live on walk live in and then live on hawk now and live on was a little more different than robert hook and live on walk actually observed a living cell so how you robert hook observed a dead cell and live on hawk observed a living cell that is he not only observed he not only observed a living cell he not only observed it right he not only observed it he actually described it also that is he described it then he also even did a small sketch of also it he not only observed a living cell he drew, observed it he described it you know complete structure of it and also gave a small sketch of it that is and can you tell me which living cell did he observe anyone which living cell he might have observed the living cell he actually observed was a bacterial cell and also protozoan and also he also observed spermatozoa along with r b c all of these cells were different type of cells which he observed should i write that also obviously should i sit and take students should, should i write it should and take or should i stand and take are you see if i sit now the i'm not able to write sitting and sitting you know i feel the energy won't be there like the you know bacteria also worked on protozoan he also worked on you know spermatozoa and he also worked on red blood cells all of these different cells he worked on that is bacterial cells protozoans spermatozoa and also rbc now there was these were the early pioneers apart from these two scientists there was one more his also starting name was robert 
but his entire name was Robert with a color that is Robert with a color that is Robert Brown. Robert Brown and he actually discovered the nucleus. Everyone is saying sit and take. Okay then one second students. One second. Uh, Robert Brown was Robert Brown was a scientist who discovered the nucleus and he discovered the nucleus in the orchid I think I should sit and take now I should sit and I should go to one corner here at the side corner bro everyone is like I'm covering the entire board only you're covering the, the entire board, board. so you're asking me to sit and take everyone is considered like sit and take can you shift me to this one corner here okay I'll do that Oh no, not this one. Here. Yeah. Hey. Here. Here. Now where will I be? So you'll be in this corner. So I'll reduce this thing also, no? Yeah. So it'll be visible like that. Sure, sir. Huh. No. This is fine, no? Yeah, just wait what, what, for one minute. Though? Done, guys. Is this okay? Is this okay? Now, perfect. So, okay, you should have taken written only and taken from that time. Yeah, you did a lot of exercise and you make me to do. Oh, I reduced because of you one kg today. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> is it perfect? Oh, I think I think it's too low. It's, Don't you think so? Wait, 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 wait. Now, fine, perfect, perfect. Is, I think this is enough, otherwise, it'll become too low. Though. I'll be fine. That's fine. Is it okay, guys? Is it okay? Amazing. Now, let me quickly revise the entire thing what we learned okay. till now. Okay, so there is something called a cell theory. There were different scientists who worked on cell theory. What the first scientist here was the Robert Hooke. Now, Robert Hooke was a scientist who worked on the cells. He was the first scientist who actually observed the cells. But did he observe living cell or dead cell? He was a scientist who observed a dead cell. And he actually observed the cork cells. And if you want to know a small secret which I already told you, that is the cell wall enclosing a space left toward the dead protoplast. That is what Robert Hooke actually observed. Then we have Anton von Leeuwenhoek, who was a scientist who worked on microscopy and everything and he actually found the living cells for the first time that is he not only observed described and sketched the living cells uh, he also did the work on bacteria protozoans spermatozoa and also rbc that is red blood cells now apart from this we also have a scientist called as your robert brown robert brown was a scientist who discovered the nucleus now i'll tell you a small thing here this anton von leeuwen hook is also called as your father of microscopy father of microscopy father of microscopy now let me tell you the actual cell theory now this was just the scientist who worked on the cell but the actual cell theory was given by two different scientists initially one was your a german scientist that is a german botanist the other one was a british zoologist now the cell theory which was given, the first cell theory was given in your 1838. In 1838 by Mattis, Mattis, one second, Scheiden, Mattis Scheiden. He was a German botanist. He was a German botanist. German botanist and if the, if he's a botanist he'll obviously work on plants or animals if he's a botanist like me he would have worked on different plants here so what did he actually find in the cell theory his contribution was that he found a plant he cut open the plant and he noticed inside 
he he noticed that every single plant is made up of many every single plant is made up of many different type of cells and all of these cells are actually joined together to form a different types of tissues in the case of plants so the first scientist is your Scheiden that is a German botanist now German botanist is very important term because sometimes the question can asked be asked as a German botanist and they will not tell you the Scheiden name then there's another scientist in the year 1839 if I'm not wrong, in 1839, there is a scientist called as Theodore. Sounds like a wizard. Theodore Swan. Theodore Swan was a British zoologist. Unlike about botanist, he was a British zoologist. And his work was mainly on, on the animals. His main work was on the animals now what did he find in animals anyone knows in the chat how many of you have ever read this chapter you might know he actually told few things here the first thing he told was he noticed was plasma membrane he noticed was plasma membrane that is there is a small thin layer around the cell called as plasma membrane but did he know that it was plasma membrane no later on after the electron microscopy and later on after a few years we understood that the thin layer which your swan was talking about was nothing but the plasma membrane that is we know this as a plasma membrane today but did he know that previously the answer is no he did not notice a plasma membrane but he noticed there is a small thin layer around the cell now he also identified a cell wall he also identified cell wall and he also told that this particular cell wall is very exclusive it is very exclusive to the plants it is very exclusive and a unique property for the plants now he told one line here that is animals and plants animals as well as the plants they are composed of one second students animals and plants are composed of cells and also product of cells composed of cells and product of cells now this theory was till okay till here it is everything is fine we know we have cells that is in plants we have different type of cells we join together to form different type of tissues we have plants and animals they are composed of cells and a product of cells but the question the burning question which did not resolve is where do cells come from do someone add the cells inside then where do the cells actually originate from the answer to this question was not given by theodore or your swan as well as Sidon. They could not find the answer to this. The answer actually came from another scientist called as your Rudolf Virchow in the year 1855. In the year 1855, there was a scientist called as Rudolf Virchow. Rudolf Virchow was a scientist who first explained, who first explained that cells divide stupid people no one adds anything no one is adding a cell cell is already there the same pre-existing cell is actually dividing so until 1855 no one even thought that cells can actually divide till then no one thought cells can actually divide and we can get a new cell so stupid everyone there so Rudolf Virchow in the year 1855 for the first time he explained that the cells divide and new cells New cells are formed from pre-existing pre-existing cells. Pre-existing cells. Now here your NCRT clearly tells one line for this that is in other language that is omnis, not omni, omnis. Cellular E cellular. Omnis cellular E 
Stella by Rudolf, Rudolf Virchow. So he till now we know that cell theory has two different formulas, the two different uh, theorems or whatever you call it. The first one here is every plant or animal cell. The first one here is every plant or animal cell is made up of every plant or animal cell is made up of what? Composed of living, uh, composed of cells and a product of cells. The second point about your cell theory is that the cells divide and the cells, new cells are formed from the pre-existing cells. These two were the most important points of the cell theory. So students, any doubt in cell theory, you can ask me right now and I'll, I'm looking at the chat now. Clear? Any doubt you can ask me. Is the handwriting, oh, one more thing, is the handwriting visible to all of you? Tell me right now, is the handwriting visible to all of you? Is my voice visible? If the, uh, you know, the video quality is, you know, clear to all of you. Because I'm going to make notes like this for you for the entire chapter today. Every single line of NCRT, I'll make you write in the form of notes. And I, everyone I want to write down the notes like this. And this these are the notes which will be helpful to you in the exam time. Exam time again, you don't have to watch my video again. All you need to do during the exam time is flip through your notes. Flip through your notes. Okay. Visible, everything perfect. Amazing, all of you are. No clear? Yes. Good evening. Yes. Good evening, Sangeeta. Good evening, Sa Sa Sanvi. Yep, sir. Clear, sir, Rupa. Amazing. Now, if everything is clear, tell me one organism which cell theory does not applicable. It is one rogue, rogue ninja. For this particular organism, the cell theory is not applicable only. Can anyone tell me in the chat which is that organism where cell theory is not applicable? Tell me fast. Which cell is that? Not which cell. Which is that organism? The organism which I'm talking about gave you two years of holidays. Two years of holidays. The organism which I'm talking about here is is a virus. Is a virus. Virus. On the virus, the entire cell theory does not applicable. Clear. That is the virus here. And go to the next slide. Now, overview of the cell theory now. We'll have a complete overview of the cell now. All of us know the cell is completely divided into two parts. Yes, the entire cell is divided into two different categories. One is a prokaryotic cell. Other one is a eukaryotic cell. The prokaryotic cells are the cells which are found in the kingdom monera. That is cells without well-defined you know, nucleus. Do not have a well-defined nucleus. Now, here U means what? U means true. That is cells with true nucleus. They are cells with true nucleus. Cells without true nucleus. Those are called as prokaryotes. Clear? Now, this is the five kingdom classification. We have monera, protista, fungi, plantae and animalia. Apart from kingdom monera, every single kingdom is Pro eukaryotic in nature. The only kingdom which is prokaryotic is kingdom monera. Now, if I want you to write a complete overview, let me write on the few points here about prokaryotes. Prokaryotes. The first point about prokaryotes here, I want all of you to understand the basic division that prokaryotes, the organelles in the prokaryotes do not have any kind of membrane. They are like, you know, naked. They do not wear clothes only. That is, no membrane-born organelles. No membrane-bound organelles. Yes, they do not have any membrane-bound organelles here. No membrane-bound organelles. Now, what about, sir, tell me about eukaryotes. Does eukaryotes... Do eukaryotes have membrane bound? That is a basic difference. In the case of eukaryotes, that is, membrane bound organelles are found. They have membrane bound organelles. Membrane bound organelles. Quick examples. Yes, sir. Quick example is your nucleus. Yes. The quick example here is the nucleus. Apart from nucleus, are there any other examples? Yes, sir. What about mitochondria? What about mitochondria, nucleus, mitochondria? Then we have endoplasmic reticulum, 
apart then we have lysosomes lysosomes and we have vacuoles we have the vacuoles all of this that the membrane organelles have a complete covering on top but if i ask you a question if i ask you a question now in the case of eukaryotes do they also have non membrane that is do they have organelles without any membrane the answer is yes even in the case of eukaryotes even in the case of eukaryotes they have something called as non membrane non membrane bound organelles non membrane bound organelles the first example here is called as ribosomes is called as the ribosome now this ribosome is actually very special why because this ribosome here is a common in both in the case of your eukaryote as well as prokaryote ribosome can be found in both the places in prokaryotes as well as in the case of eukaryotes now what about this one more organelle one more organelle which is found only in the case of animals one more organelle which is found only in the case of animals which is non membrane bound can anyone tell me in the chat it starts from c it is called as centrosome it's called as what centrosome now quickly tell me what is the function of ribosomes all of you know this is 2024 you might have heard the function of ribosome is protein formation they are involved in the protein formation now what about centrosome what is the function of centrosome don't worry we'll be discussing later on but for now please remember the centrosome function is very simple that is they are involved in the cell division they are involved in the cell division clear they're involved in the cell division now can we talk about different sizes of the cell yes i told you cell is small i told you cell is very small but how small is a cell if you talk about the cell size which is the smallest cell the smallest cell in the smallest cell in the world the smallest cell in the world is nothing but mycoplasma is the myco plasma what is the size of mycoplasma the size of the mycoplasma in the written text is your 0.3 micrometer now what about the largest cell the largest cell here the largest cell in the world is nothing but a gamete which gamete it belongs to a bird the bird i'm talking about here is ostrich it the largest is the ostrich egg ostrich egg not a gamete sorry fused egg is the gamete here that is the ostrich egg now tell me in the chat what about the simple plain old bacteria what is the size of the bacteria the size of the bacteria is very simple students these are important points that is they can ask you <laughs> i am not even kidding they can ask you this that is they can give you a complete list and they'll ask you to do a you know um, uh, you know ascending to descending order which is the largest cell which is the smallest cell size of the bacteria right now what about the human red blood cell anyone in the chat who can tell me human red blood cell the size of the human red blood cell is around 7 micrometer is around 7 micrometer now we learned about the smallest cell we also learned about the largest cell then which is the longest cell then see largest is ostrich egg smallest is your mycoplasma which is the longest now just like how your longest river and largest river longest river is a nile river largest river is amazon river then uh, what about the longest cell it is actually present inside you that is nothing but your nerve cell is the nerve cell any doubt here students now this is the information i want all of you to remember this it is very important to remember this information there is no way you have to buy her this information that is the size of the cell see we have your red blood cells different shapes and sizes now different shapes and sizes we have the red blood cells which has the around concave and biconcave nature it is chapter like this and from inside it is very you know you 
throw something from inside it is biconcave in nature why because as it matures it needs to carry more hemoglobin that is why it becomes biconcave in nature then we have the ami white blood cells which shows amoeboid structure what is the meaning of amoeboid the meaning of amoeboid structure here is it does not have any proper shape it is amoeba like no proper shape now do we uh, in a locomotion chapter if you have studied locomotion chapter can anyone tell me how is the what is the movement of white blood cells called as like white blood cells will move from one blood vessels to other blood vessels the movement of your white blood cells is called as anyone if you have, if you have studied your class 11th human physiology the movement which i'm calling trying to remember, ask you to remember is diapedesis is the diapedesis it is the movement of the white blood cells that is squeeze like this and move then we have columnar epithelial cells long and narrow then we have branched nerve cell extreme branching then we have tracheids you know elongated then we have the mesophyll cells the cute cells the mesophyll cells which are round and vowel in nature round and vowel in nature that is a different different types of cells again size virus which is not not important eukaryotic is around 10 to 20 micrometer then we have mycoplasma 0 0.2 to 1 micrometer then we have bacterium 3 to 4 3 to 5 micrometer that is the end of starting part any doubt here ask me right now any doubt till here ask me right now any doubt here one point i have to write make you write here is something called as shape one doubt you might have this doubt you're not asking the doubts or if you're very shy thinking that sir will not answer the doubt ask the doubt here we have something called as basic shapes apart from what you learned there there's something called as basic shapes the first basic shape here is bacillus the first basic shape here is bacillus shape the basic shape is bacillus which means rod like which means rod like shape then we also have something called as caucus the caucus means your spherical shape is the spherical shape then we have vibrio shape what is vibrio shape it is the comma shaped type of cells then we also have something called as spirulum shape that is the spiral shape all these are basic things all of you would have known by now now i told you a basic you know prokaryotic cell let's understand prokaryotic cell now a basic prokaryotic cell what are included in a prokaryotic cell for example if i tell you bacteria is included in prokaryotic cell yes sir bacteria are part of your prokaryotic cell then we also have your blue green algae yes we have the blue green algae do they also belong to prokaryotic cell yes sir they also belong to prokaryotic cell now what about mycoplasma mycoplasma yes sir they also belong to prokaryotic cell then we have your pplo that is pleuronemonia like organism all of these that right, bacteria blue green algae mycoplasma pplo all of them are belong to your prokaryotic cell now let me write on the few basic first point about your prokaryotic cell now i told you prokaryotic cell is found in the case of bacteria will the cell will be small cell or very large cell obviously sir bacterial cells are very small cell yes that is the they have very small and small cell now if you have a small cell does it multiply quick or multiply very slowly the answer is very simple again sir it is a very small cell which multiply rapidly which multiplies rapidly multiplies rapidly now this might be a shock to all of you who do not know this chapter all of you know plant has a cell wall do your bacterial cell which is a type of prokaryotic cell do we also find cell wall in the case of bacteria anyone in the chat who can tell me anyone 
the answer is wait something else is going on in the chat sorry students i'm not looking at the chat very constantly today because uh, i will get if i look at the chat i get very distracted here bacterial cell has a cell wall yes it has a cell wall now do all the prokaryotes have cell wall you will tell me yes sir all prokaryotes have cell wall then i will tell you no you're wrong because there is one prokaryote which does not have a cell wall that is except the mycoplasma except the myco plasma now this is where the questions will come from questions will not come from that you know so uh, bacterial cells have cell wall true or false you don't get you don't get questions like this questions will come from exceptions like this except the myco plasma now quickly tell me in the chat what is cell wall made up of so you'll tell me plus cell wall is made up of cellulose sir that is in the case of your plants what about the prokaryotic cell what is it made up of cell wall it is made up of a special type of substance called as peptidoglycan it is made of such special substance called as peptidoglycan peptidoglycan now i thought about peptidoglycan in your biomolecules chapter we have discussed in detail now based on this peptidoglycan if there is peptidoglycan present if it is present in too much quantity if the peptidoglycan is present in less quantity you can divide the bacterial cell into two types that is gram positive and gram negative gram negative type of bacteria now quickly tell me in the chat if you want to know the principle of gram negative or uh, gram positive and gram negative bacteria that is gram staining yes nag and nam units quickly tell me in the chat if you want to know the principle of your gram staining very important not for your need but it is a very important concept which led to a lot of discoveries later on tell me first in the chat do you want to know what is the principle of your gram staining tell me first your prokaryotic cell has something called as cytoplasm also but what about the nucleus the nucleus here is actually not well defined not well defined all of you saying yes sir okay listen to us listen to it as a story listen to it as a story all of you now we have something called as your gram positive bacteria and we also have something called as your gram negative bacteria now i told you there is a every bacteria has a cell wall now the cell wall has something called as peptidoglycan along with peptidoglycan there is also something called as lipid layer this also also called as lipid layer is also present now now in the case of your gram positive in the case of gram positive the peptidoglycan layer is very thick in the case of your gram positive the peptidoglycan layer is very thick and lipid layers are very very small lipid layers are very small but in the case of your gram negative peptidoglycan layer is very thin and the lipid layers are very big lipid layers are very very big that is the point number 1 which all of you need to remember now in gram staining if you do the experiment there are three different stains yes sir there are three different stains the first stain which we add right which is the red stain can anyone in the chat tell me which is the stain which is the first stain used in your gram staining anyone in the chat who can tell me anyone which is the first stain in your gram staining it is purple color stain called as crystal violet now when i say purple and violet it is actually violet not purple the first stain is your crystal violet stain so when we add crystal violet stain on a slide okay both the bacterial cells will you know on the cell wall the stain will be on the cell wall yes the stain is there will they take up the stain in the starting no they will not take up the stain in the starting then what do we do we completely wash the first stain then then we add something called as alcohol yes we add alcohol on top of it adding the alcohol when we add the alcohol what happens this alcohol will completely dissolve the lipid layer there now i told you in the case of gram positive lipid layer was very tiny yes the lipid layer will open up in the case of gram negative lipid layer was very big that will also will open up because lipids are as you know alcohol soluble the lipid layer is completely dissolved now now think on your cell membrane there are small small holes like this 
small small holes on the cell membrane now what happens the stain the first stain the crystal violet the crystal violet stain will enter inside now crystal violet stain will enter inside now we wash the alcohol then we add something called as iodine now when we add the iodine what happens this lipid layer will close lipid layer will completely close in the case of gram positive but in the case of gram negative since the pores are very large it will take time to close when it is taking time to close when we add the iodine and we wash it again all the stain will come out all the stain will come out because lipid you now the lipid holes are still open so the stain can easily spill outside that is why when we add the last stain called a safranin right when we add the safranin as a cleansing agent the gram staining has taken up the stain because lipid layers closed and the stain was captured inside but in the case of gram negative which had a very thin layer of peptidoglycan and big big fat soluble lipid soluble they could not hold the color because the holes were so big before they close all the stain was removed outside all the stain was removed that's why that's why when you look under the microscope gram positive will look you know violet color because the first stain crystal violet stain has been retained inside the cell wall but your gram negative will look what completely colorless because it could not hold the color because peptidoglycan layer is very thin lipid layer is very big so when the lipid layer is completely dissolved by the alcohol all the stain went away clear that is the prince that is the crystal violet principle of your gram staining which you will be studying in your mbbs okay i simply thought you now don't tell later on the chat sir please teach only for neat then i'll tell in the chat so you only ask for it okay now next concept is the genetic material is the genetic material did all of you understand did all of you understand the gram staining principle or is it too complex for all of you did you understand the gram staining principle is it too complex for you tell me first in the case of gram staining peptidoglycan layer is very thick in the gram positive and lipids are very small holes that is why it is completely captured but in the case of your gram negative peptidoglycan layer is very you know thin lipid layers are very big so when the lipid bear big holes are created it will take time to close when it is taking time to close all the stain is going outside so why are we using cleansing agent cleansing agent is used to make sure there is no you know remaining of previous stain when you do this experiment you will know it better this you will teach in your mbbs you will learn this in mbbs or if you do masters you learn it there and all that okay now you tell me genetic material genetic material in the case of prokaryotes genetic material in the case of pro prokaryotes is a single sad chromosome a single sad chromosome also it could be your circular dna it could be your circular dna that is apart from the circular dna there is also something called as plasmid is present here also something called as plasmid is present here now what is this plasmid plasmid is actually a extra cellular self replicating dna chromosomal dna now what is the function of this plasmid how can we exploit the plasmid how can we you know use the plasmid for antibiotic resistance to, uh, to find you know blue blue and white screening all that you learn in your class 12th biotic chapter but all you need to know right now is plasmid is the structure which is found in the case of your prokaryotes it is found in the case of prokaryotes clear any doubt here all of you the chat has become very slow i see the chat has become very slow all of you are miss all of you are sleeping i feel is the chapter too boring is the energy not reaching today is the energy not reaching all of you is the chapter very boring it doesn't get stained by safranin because the lipids are actually layers are closing but if you notice under the microscope see percy you are asking a very amazing doubt the reason i told colorless here the reason i told colorless here because your ncrt says colorless but if you look under the microscope or if you google right now you will see 
gram negative is actually a little red in color very amazing doubt if you look under the microscope if you actually look under the microscope if you want i can show you my microscopic sections of gram staining i'll show you my telegram i'll add on my telegram okay if you notice there your gram negative actually not colorless gram negative is actually a little red in color it is actually red in color very amazing doubt okay your ncid is saying colorless because i'm to i told colorless here but it doesn't look colorless it actually holds the saffron in the second dye which we would use okay clear or is it where all of this is all of this is too boring for all of you this is pure science all of this is pure science which you will be learning in mbbs okay now let's talk about cell envelopes and its modification can we start cell envelope and modification now i'm going deliberately very slow students very slow because i want everyone to understand this chapter and we wasted a lot of time in the starting okay now let me draw the structure of one basic structure basic structure of your prokaryotic cell yes your prokaryotic cell has in total of three different layers it has how many layers three different layers the outermost layer here the outermost layer is called as glycocalyx is called as glycocalyx now this glycocalyx is the outermost layer now this glycocalyx can be in the form of in the form of like you know very loose sheets it can be form of very loose sheet when glycocalyx is present in the form of loose sheet it is called as your slime layer it is called as what slime layer now what about if the glycocalyx is not loose if the glycocalyx is completely thick and tough it is very thick and tough yes it is very thick and tough when the glycocalyx is very thick and tough it is called as your capsule it is called as capsule now what is the second layer here the second layer is this is the cell wall the second layer is the ah uh, the second layer is the amazing cell wall okay second layer is the cell wall cell wall i told you again cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan now what is the meaning of this peptido the meaning of peptido is peptide where do you find peptide bond tell me in the chat where do you find the peptide and all the peptide is actually found between the two different amino acids yes peptide bond is there so can i tell in the case of peptidoglycan it is made up of different types of amino acids yes there are many different types of amino acids like your l lysine l lysine extra information all of you this is extra information extra information all of you can write down this but i suggest you you can stick to ncrd but this is extra information for your clarity you also have glutamic acid you also have your d alanine all of these are different type of amino acids which are present here apart from this there is also called as dapa which is also present that is in the case of gram negative but in the case of gram positive it has ticolic acid it has something called as ticolic acid that is extra information you don't have to remember that okay now what is this glycan glycan is nothing but a type of your sugar is a type of your sugar that is your nag and nam n acetyl glucose acid and n acetyl muromic acid clear now that is your bacterial cell now let's understand there's something called as your inside layer the inside layer is nothing but plasma membrane the innermost layer the innermost layer is called as your oh wait the innermost layer is called as plasma membrane now quickly tell me in the chat is this plasma membrane completely permeable or selectively permeable in the case of your prokaryotes this plasma membrane is selectively permeable selectively permeable in nature i should have 
Are you writing down with me, all of you? Or am I writing for no one? It is selectively permeable. Clear? Now, within this cell, within this plasma membrane, within this plasma membrane, there are certain foldings like this. There are certain foldings like this. There are certain foldings like this. These foldings which are present in the plasma membrane, like certain constrictions, are have a special name. The constrictions in the plasma membrane have a special name called as your mesosomes. Called as mesosomes. What is the function of mesosome? Are they, where are they, like you know, where are they found? Everything I'll tell you. Give me a minute before that. Let's complete the entire diagram here. Now apart from this, can we find a type of nucleus here? Yes. The nucleus in the case of your, in the case of your prokaryotic cell is called as your nucleoid. It is called as what? Nucleoid. Does it have ribosomes? Yes, sir. It also has ribosomes. It also has ribosomes. These are 70 s ribosomes. Don't worry, I'll be telling you what is 70 s, what is 80 s later on. Now, any doubt in this beautiful prokaryotic cell? Any doubt in this prokaryotic cells? Any doubt here? I'll tell you what is mesosomes. I will tell you what is mesosomes later on. But any doubt till here? Ask me right now. Three different layers. Outermost layer is called as glycocalyx, which is can be loose sheet, slime layer. Thick is called as capsule. Then we have cell wall, which is made up of peptidoglycan. That is, it is made up of your uh, amino acids as well as your sugar units. Then we have ribosome, that is 70s ribosome. Then we have plasma membrane, which is selectively permeable. Apart from that, in the plasma membrane, there are certain, you know, constrictions called as your meso zooms now some of these mesosomes can completely filled with pigment now what if this you know instra constrictions they completely filled with you know certain type of pigment what is a pigment pigment is a color giving substance which can get excited that particular small structure where a pigment is present in the plasma membrane is called as your what chromato I have to concentrate so much to write here. Chromatophore. It is called as chromatophore. Now, this chromatophore is mainly found in the case of your cyanobacteria. In the case of cyanobacteria. Now, apart from all these layers, do bacterial cells need anything for attachment? Yes, sir. They need something for attachment. Do you have something called as your one small tubular structure here? Now, this tubular structure is nothing but your pilus or fimbriae. Pilus or fimbriae. Now, this pilus fimbriae, NCRT clearly tells you they are not for motility at all. They are only for attachment. This pilus or fimbriae are mainly for what? Attachment. Mainly for attachment. Then, how do the bacterial cell move? They need to show movement, right? The movement by the bacterial cell is, is because of the flagella. Obviously, it will have a flagella here. It will have a flagella. It will have a flagella. Now, this is the actually entire structure of your, entire structure of your prokaryotic cell. Any doubt in this cell structure or modification, you can ask me right now. Any doubt here, chromatophore which is found in the case of cyanobacteria. It has a nucleoid which is completely naked, no proper shape. Then we have mesosomes. I'll tell you what are mesosomes functions. I'll tell you later on. Then we have plasma membrane which is in the case of here, selectively permeable plasma membrane. Apart from that, we have pilus or fimbria which helps in attachment. Then movement is shown in the case of via flagella. Movement in the case by flagella amazing next slide now this is the structure of the flagella this is the structure of your flagella can you see the flagella has three main parts here three main parts then first part called your first part is called as the basal body that is can you see this basal body is made up of rings here basal body is made up of rings here then we have a hook like structure Yes, the second is called as a hook. Then we have a long slender filament. 
these are the three different parts of the flagella which is also given in your ncrt clear now i told you about something called as meso mesosome yes mesosome was what mesosome was something but an extension extension of plasma membrane yes it was an extension of plasma membrane now this mesosome can have various shapes this mesosome can have various type of shapes the first shape is here it can have something called as vesicle shape it can be in the form of vesicles that is round shape it can also be in the case of tubular in nature like a tube like shape it can also be in the case of shape of your lamellae lamellae is like this now this vesicles are seen in the case of your spermatocytes tubular is seen in the case of you know different types of cells then we have laminae now what are the functions of your different functions of your mesosomes now this is where the question will come from this is where the question will come from so what are the functions of your mesosome the first main function of your mesosome is it it is involved in your cell wall formation yes it is involved in the cell wall formation it is also involved in dna replication yes it is also involved in respiration it is also involved in the case of respiration now this mesosome can also become secretory that is it can secrete it also involved in secretion process also involved in secretion process now in biology in your stomach we have the villi then we have in lungs we have alveoli then every start every single time there is a folding every single time there is a folding what is the main function of the folding the main function of any type of folding in the case of biology is to increase the surface area so just like every single folding mesosome also does what mesosome also does increase in surface area as well as something called as enzymatic activity enzymatic activity the last one is which is also mentioned in your ncrt is distribution of distribution of daughter cells distribution of daughter cells so what are the functions of mesosomes what is the mesosome mesosome is an extension of your plasma membrane it can be in different shapes like your vesicle shape tubular shape or lamellae shape now what are the functions of mesosome it is cell wall formation dna replication respiration secretion process increasing surface area on enzymatic activity and also the distribution of daughter cell distribution of daughter cell any doubt in mesosome ask me right now ask me right now no doubt here no doubt amazing now let me quickly tell you about the movement which i already show you a diagram i should not show you a diagram here in your bacterial cell can be motile or it can be non motile it can be motile or non motile now motility is because of the flagella which is present here because of the flagella which is present here and i already told you flagella has three different parts the first one is your basal body basal body the second part was your hey we have a spammer are yaar jaldi wahan se hato bro this guy has come after so long this spammer has come after so long i'm so happy one second students this guy will disturb you throughout your entity he used to come in the starting but after so many months this spammer is back i'm so happy I'm like only go pick up and get spammers. I am not getting any spammer. What is this? If I tell this to go pick up, go pick up will hit me. Okay. Now this is the basal body. The other one was your hook. The last part was your filament. If you draw the structure, it looks like this: three different rings. Then basal body, that is like this. Then we have the long filament. welcome once again bro let is uh, 
ऑलमोस्ट मेडियम इज मॉडरेटर पुट यूजर इन टाइम आउट ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स लाइक इन गो सेशन गो डोंट फॉरगेट लाइक इन सेशन लाइक इन गो सेशन लाइक इज इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज टू रीच हेस्ट टू रीच रीच हेस्ट टू गो उफ दिस इज योर बैटीरियल सेल्स विच कैन शो मोर्टिलिटी एंड नॉन मोटाइल मोर्टिलिटी कैन बिकॉज ऑफ द फ्लैजुलम एंड बेसल बॉडी हु कैन फिलमेंट देन वी गो टू द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज राइबोसोम्स एंड इंक्लूजन बॉडीज दिस समथिंग कॉल्ड एज राइबोसोम्स एंड इंक्लूजन बॉडीज नाउ ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू अबाउट राइसो राइबोसोम्स इन द केस ऑफ योर प्रोकैरियोट्स He said, "Block me if you have power. I already blocked. No. Aiyah. Uh, Now, ribosomes are very simple creatures. That is, they are the site for what? Protein synthesis. Yes, ribosomes are site for protein synthesis. Now, in the case of your prokaryotic cell, ribosomes size is around fifteen nanometer to around twenty nanometer in size." Yes, very tiny structures. Now, this particular ribosome, in the case of a prokaryote, is around something called as seventy s, which is divided into fifty s as well as thirty s. Fifty s subunit, also called as thirty s subunit. Now, quickly add and tell me what is fifty plus eighty. Fifty plus thirty. Fast, tell me. Fifty plus thirty is what? Now here, this particular S, the S is called as your sedimentation coefficient. I'm speak. See, the students are not used to speaking so slow, and writing is very slow. Sedimentation coefficient. It is also called as your Sedberg unit. Sedberg unit. Sedberg unit. Tell me fast. What is the seventy plus thirty? Seven fifty. Sixty, seventy, eighty. It should come as eighty, right? But why is it seventy? Why is it seventy? Tell me. The answer to this question is very simple. It is very technical actually. This seventy plus thirty, you it you cannot add it because it is a non-additive structure or non-additive nature. When I when I say non-additive, that is, this seventy plus thirty is not actually based on the arithmetic. That is the seventy we are dividing into fifty and thirty is not based on maths actually, it is based on biology. It is based on biology. When we do something called as centrifugation, when we do something called as centrifugation, each and every organel, each and every ribosome will separate out. They will separate out and they will settle down. After centrifugation, in the test tube, they will try to settle down. What the ribosomes will settle down after centrifugation. For example, when you centrifuge a seventy s yes ribosome, it will settle down somewhere here. Seventy s yes ribosome. And if you take a thirty s yes subunit, it will settle down somewhere here. Now, what about fifty s yes subunit? Fifty s yes subunit will settle down here. Fifty s yes will settle down somewhere here. So, this thirty seventy years, fifty years, and thirty years. Now, this particular seventy years, thirty years, fifty years is the separation based on the density. That is why when I say seventy years is divided into your fifty years and thirty years, this is not based on mathematics. Remember that, not based on mathematics. It is based on the density. That is, when we do a centrifugation of your ribosomes, they separate out separately. So, seventy years will separate out here. Then we have fifty years. Then we have the Thirty years. That is why we have fifty years and thirty years. That is separation based on the density. Clear? Now, in the case of this, I'll clear this. Any doubt here? Any doubt here? Why we are saying seventy and thirty? That is because it is the separation based on the density, not based on arithmetic value. Clear? Now, in the case of your ribosomes. There is some. There are several ribosomes. Several ribosomes can be present on a single mRNA. Several ribosomes can be present on a single mRNA. When several ribosomes are present on only a single single mRNA, it is called as your 
poly ribosome it is called as what poly ribosome this it has a, some other name also this poly ribosome is also called as poly zone it is also called as what polysome clear this is also given in your ncrt polysome now here the mrna will this will produce this will produce again later on will produce the proteins now what about the inclusion bodies now what are these inclusion bodies inclusion bodies are nothing but your reserved food material like in the case of your plants we have the vacuoles vacuoles store something Similarly, inclusion body are also part of your reserve material stored here. Reserved material is stored here. That is, it is a reserved material storage unit. It is a reserved food material storage unit. Clear? Now, is this inclusion bodies, are they present in a specifically or are they floating, floating everywhere? This particular inclusion body is actually completely floating. It is free in the cytoplasm. Completely free in the cytoplasm. Clear? Now, there are a few examples which is given you NCRT which all of you need to remember. That is your phosphate granules. That is the phosphate granules. Then we have the cyanio. Pycian granules. You see granules. Then we have something called as your glycogen granules. Glycogen granules. Then that's all I guess. Only three are there. Second. So the line is there. Yes. So there are three different types of granules. Example here phosphate granules, cyanophysian granules, and also called as glycogen granules. Now there is one more point here, something called as gas chamber, no gas vacuoles. Something called as gas vacuoles. Now, these ga gas vacuoles are very exclusively, they are not found everywhere. There are certain bacteria which can float, which can produce some gas. They are actually photosynthetic also in nature. Those type of bacteria which are photosynthetic in nature, those are called as your pulp purple sulfur bacteria and green sulfur bacteria so they are present in your blue green and purple green cyanobacteria gas chambers are present in your blue green as well as purple sulfur or your pulp purple green cyanobacteria so what are inclusion bodies inclusion bodies are a storage reserved material the reserve material is stored in your unit. It is completely free in the cytoplasm. The example is the phosphate granules which store phosphate, cyanophysin granules, and we also have glycogen granules. The other point which is the other point here is gas vacuoles that is present in the case of your blue green as well as sulfur green cyanobacteria. Done. Done. So this is the entire structure of your prokaryotic cell. It has a cell wall made of a proglycan. There is present of capsule. That is glycocalyx, it becomes hard. Then we have pilus for attachment, cytoplasm, which is present inside. Then we have nuclear, that is the DNA. We have the ribosome, that is the 70S ribosome. Then we have the flagella, which has three parts, basal body, hook, and filament, which help in the movement. Then we have the plasmid, extracellular DNA, which help in which help which is used in your biotechnology. Then we have the plasma membrane here. Then we have the plasma membrane here that is the end of your prokaryotic bacteria any doubt ask me right now doubt time any doubt you can ask me right now i know students why is it floating because it is floating because in the case of your prokaryotic there is no proper organization in the case of your prokaryotic everything is scattered there is no proper you know, systematic organization. There is no compartmentalization. That is the word. Yes, there is no compartmentalization in the case of your prokaryotics. That is why it is very fluidly floating. Somewhere it will be on its own. Clear? Yes, cytoplasmic property. 
any doubt here you can all of you can ask me if there is no doubt here i want to see some josh in the chat because students i am not looking at chat today very you know I usually gas vacuoles see in the case of your certain prokaryotes in the case of certain prokaryotic cells there is presence of gas vacuoles now these gas vacuoles can have multiple purposes such as your buoyancy or you know other other functions now this gas vacuoles are present in certain cyanobacteria that is nothing but your blue green bacteria pul purple green cyanobacteria in certain bacteria gas chambers are present for buoyancy clear is everyone here or everyone left and all of you are liking not liking the video i feel so much of distribution of daughter cells here i'll tell you any doubt ask me right now students see mesosomes are a extension of plasma membrane right they actually help in like you know since they increase the surface area since they increase the surface area they can reach out to lot of places yes so they help in distribution of daughter cells during the cell division whenever their prokaryotic cells divides they help in distribution of daughter cells there is no specific function if i have to explain you the daughter cells i have to draw the actual proper structure of mesosome here in ncert they are given you small structure but the actual structure is very different okay can we start your eukaryotes can we start your eukaryotes eukaryotic cell that will take 2 hours is everyone here or everyone left students if you notice i am writing every single point of your ncert if you open your ncert right now every point here every point here will be from your ncert and this is your notes actually these are your notes these are your actually your notes okay these notes can be used by you for your directly for your reading material later on you don't have to even go through the entire ncert nothing every single note i'm giving you is direct line from your ncert just in a simplified manner so all of you can understand okay now where do you find your eukaryotic cell eukaryotic cell is seen in the case of your protists eukaryotic cell is found in the case of your plants eukaryotic cell is present in the case of your animals eukaryotic cell is also present in the case of fungi every single other kingdom other than the monera you can find the eukaryotic you can find the eukaryotic cell now let's write down few characters here can we write down few characters here can we the first character of your eukaryotic cell is nothing but unlike your prokaryote unlike your prokaryote your eukaryotic cell is actually oh, oh oh my god what is happening what is happening where are we here unlike your prokaryotic cell your eukaryotic cell is actually membrane bound it is what it is why is in control okay it is membrane bound organelles it has what membrane bound organelles clear now what about the nucleus here the it has a very organized nucleus very organized nucleus with now this nucleus is very organized but this nucleus also has an extra covering on top of it the extra covering of the nucleus is called as your nuclear envelope with nuclear envelope or envelope whatever you say but i say envelope because fancy english envelope now what about complex locomotory and cytoskeletal structures can anyone tell me what are this complex locomotory structures this complex locomotory structures are very simple which you will study later on that is cilia cilia is present here see till now in prokaryotes did we talk about cilia anywhere we spoke about you know uh, flagella we spoke about pilus we spoke about fimbriae fimbriae and pilus uh, pilus are for attachment but we spoke about flagella there but here the complex locomotory which i'm talking about here is cilia then we have cytoskeletal structures also present here cytoskeletal structure here what about the genetic material here genetic material is free floating is the genetic material scattered around here no 
in the case of eukaryotes the genetic material is actually present in the in the form of chromosomes genetic material in the form of chromosome now if i tell you about the brief difference between your plant cell as well as your animal cell the basic difference I have not blocked any ID. I am not even touching the screen here. What are you telling? I am blocking any ID. The plant cell has something called as cell wall. All of you know. Has something called as cell wall. It has plasters. Do we find plasters in the case of animals? Obviously not. Then we also have something called as a large, large central vacuole. Large central vacuole. But what is that one organal? which is very exclusive to your animals the one organelle which is very exclusive to your animals not found in your, your plants is your centrosome or centrioles is the centrioles is the centrioles clear so look at the plant cell amazing plant cell we have here plant cell has your lysozymes which i will tell you later i'll tell you about all of these are later on but all of you need to focus here is presence of cell wall presence of your chloroplast presence of peroxisomes and look at the vacuole here look at the vacuole here very large vacuole is present in the case of plants and this vacuole is very special this vacuole has an outer covering called as tonoplast which we will study later on okay we shall talk about vacuoles okay this is your animal cell animal cell the exclusive part of your animal cell is your centrioles can you see this two round round structure which is perpendicular to each other yes centro centro uh, centrosome has two pan parallel things yes that is centrioles now we'll talk about centrioles in detail later on every single point i'll tell you the diagrammatic also how there are ring how many rings are there everything in detail later on now let's talk about cell or plasma membrane now let's understand cell or plasma membrane yes students cell membrane and plasma membrane are both are same to same okay both are same to same now this cell or plasma membrane what is it made up of your cell or plasma membrane this cell or plasma membrane is made up of your lipids yes it is made up of lipids now this celloplasma membrane is also made up of proteins also made up of proteins it is also made up of carbohydrates also made up of carbohydrates and also made up of a special type of lipid a special type of derived lipid i've told in biomolecules the derived lipids and phospholipids it is also made up of a special derived lipid called as your cholesterol called as why am I talking like kids to all of you? Cholesterol. Cholesterol. Now, this cholesterol is actually something called as the function of this cholesterol is it is a stabilizing agent. Apart from cholesterol, there is also water here. Also, water here. Now, composition of lipids, protein, carbohydrates is not given in your NCRT. Do not remember the percentage of lipids, percentage of proteins. No. Okay. Percentage of lipids, percentage of protein that is 20% to 70%. No, 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 don't remember that. Now, this particular plasma membrane here, this particular plasma membrane in the case of eukaryote is actually asymmetrical, just like the Indian roads. When you go on the Indian roads, is it symmetrical? No. There is one, one big depression somewhere, one big hump somewhere, again a depression, again a hump. So many potholes are there. So the entire structure of your plasma membrane is actually asymmetrical. It's actually a symmetrical in nature it is asymmetric in nature apart from asymmetric your plasma membrane is said to be mosaic now what is the meaning of mosaic mosaic means it is very random it is very random that is there is a protein layer suddenly there is a lip lipid layer suddenly a protein will come then you have lipid layer again a protein layer again that is it is a complete random structure Apart from that, can anyone in the chat tell me, this plasma membrane, is it living or dead? Simple question. Is the plasma membrane living or 
dead in nature. This plasma brain is actually living in nature, unlike the cell wall. Cell wall is super dead. Okay, this is living in nature. Now, this entire plasma membrane is semi solid. That is, it has certain liquid part, also has solid part. This semi solid has the other name. That is, it is said to be quasi fluid. Said to be quasi fluid in nature. That is, it is semi solid. That is, it has lipid also, it has a little bit of liquid nature. Also, it has solid nature to it. That is the basic characters of your plasma membrane. Now, when I told you it has a special type of lipid, the special type of lipid which I was talking about here is the, the special type of lipid which I am talking about here is the, what is happening? Special type of lipid which I am talking about here is the phospholipid. Something called as the phospholipids. Now, what are these phospholipids? I have already told you, phospholipid is a type of complex lipid or derived lipid, not sorry, conjugate compound lipid. That is, it has a glycerol, fatty acid, and also a phosphate group attached to it. I told you in biomolecules. So this phospholipid bilayer is present here. Phospholipid bilayer. Now this phospholipid has a polar head region. That is, polar head is a hydrophilic head. What is the meaning of hydrophilic? The meaning of hydrophilic is it is water loving. The head region will love the water. It will love the water. Apart from this, this phospholipid also has a hydrophobic tail region. It also has a hydrophobic tail. And this hydrophobic tail is non-polar in nature. It is non-polar in nature. That is, this hydrophobic tail does not like water like no 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 water is from inside now if you draw the structure it looks like this of a plasma membrane the hydrophilic head is present towards the outside wherever there is aqueous nature is there and hydrophilic hydrophobic tail that is doesn't like water is present towards the inside now students whenever the two types of structure, two types of molecules, that is both hydrophilic and hydrophobic molecules, when they are present together, they have a special name called as your uh, amphi. Yes, when they are called as amphipathic, amphipathic molecule, amphipathic molecule. When both hydrophobic and hydrophilic structures are present together, they are called as amphipathic molecule clear now apart from this i want all of you to understand see this see if you want to understand the plasma membrane you need to understand all these points without these points you cannot understand the plasma membrane structure if you just go look at the diagram right now some of the points can become very confusing that's why I'm making you write this all this okay now if you look at the proteins i told you it has made up of lipids lipids is done here it also has certain proteins it also has certain proteins. Now, what type of proteins can we observe here? There are two types of proteins here. One is your transmembrane protein. One is the transmembrane protein. When I say transmembrane protein, they are also called as your integral protein. They are also called as integral protein. Now, this transmembrane or integral protein can be completely inside the plasma membrane or they can their head can be just coming outside the plasma membrane. Now, this classification that is completely inside, completely outside is based on whether you can extraction, whether you can pull it out. Now, this integral protein or integral or transmembrane protein is completely inside the plasma membrane. Can you pull out easily? No, you cannot pull it out easily. Now, there is one more other protein called as your peripheral protein. Periphery means outside. Yes, periphery means outside. So, there is a peripheral protein is present towards the outside and this peripheral protein can be easily be extracted out. It can be easily be pulled out. Okay. So, before we understand the entire structure, I want all of you to understand the basic requirements that is uh, plasma membrane is made up of lipids, proteins, carbohydrates, cholesterol that is your stabilizing agent as well as water. It is asymmetrical in nature like the Indian roads. It is mosaic or random in nature. That is, suddenly a lipid will come, suddenly a protein will come. 
इट इज इट इज अ लिविंग स्ट्रक्चर इट इज सेमी फ्लूड और कोवासी फ्लूड इन नेचर तो लिपिड विच इज प्रेजेंट हियर इज फॉस्फो लिपिड बायलेयर दट इज इट एज अ पोलार हेड पोलार हेड रीजन एंड अ हाइड्रोफोबिक टेल रीजन and when both hydrophobic and hydrophilic both are present together it is called as amphipatic molecule then it also has certain proteins that is called as your transmembrane protein also called as your integral protein tunnel proteins there are other peripheral proteins now with this information let's look at the structure now let's look at the structure of your plasma membrane now if when you look at the structure of your plasma membrane peripheral protein told you peripheral protein outside present then we have sugar molecules here then we have phospholipid bilayer i told you hydrophilic head outside and hydrophobic tail here now does it look like an indian road yes sir it looks like indian road there is suddenly there is a lipid bilayer suddenly when protein is coming boom that is integral protein that is a integral protein present inside the plasma membrane then we have a, again a normal road then we also have the stabilizing agent called as cholesterol here this is the structure of your plasma membrane now one point i didn't teach you here that is the movement there are actually two type of movements here before i teach you movement i want everyone to look at this animation can you see there is see can you see the the through this integral protein part things are going in and out of the cell that is the function of your plasma membrane that is it is selectively permeable it makes sure certain things enter inside certain things go outside but if you talk about the movement within the membrane this is where the question will last from there are two types of movements inside the plasma membrane one is called as your lateral movement one is called as your flip flop movement now what is this flip flop movement sir teach me sir see this flip flop movement is mainly see this flip flop movement Can be seen in the case of your flip flop movement is rarely seen. In generally, flip flop movement is rarely seen. See, this is your plasma membrane, right? In flip flop movement, what happens? This will come here and this will go here. That is your flip flop movement. Now, that movement is very rarely seen. It is very rarely seen in the case of lipids. It is slower than the lateral movement. It is movement from one mono layer to other. That is. mono layer movement is there flip flop movement and this flip flop movement is very very rare but there is something called as lateral movements now what is lateral movements it is seen in the case of lipids more common that is laterally the lipids are moving laterally the lipids are moving can you see here this lipid will move from here to here this lipid is there right this lipid will move laterally like this lateral movement lateral movement and also seen in the case of your proteins and this protein can move around its axis can also move laterally they occur in the same mono layer see within this same mono layer the movement will occur that is called as your lateral movement and it is more common movement now because of this type of movements that is lateral movement or flip flop movement we call the entire plasma membrane as quasi fluid also called as fluid mosaic model it is also called as what fluid mosaic model and this fluid mosaic model was given by which scientists who can tell me in the chat right now which are the two scientists who gave the fluid mosaic model i want in the chat okay now before i tell you about the membrane transport the function i want all of you to understand one point here that is in the case of your erythrocytes that is your red blood cells it is consist of 52% of your proteins before i told you you don't have to remember the remember the composition but one composition which you need to remember is in the case of your erythrocytes that is red blood cells it is made up of 52% protein as well as 40% 40% of your lipids but do they add up to 100% like no sir they don't add up to 100% then what is the extra thing which is present here the extra thing which is not present here is cholesterol and water okay cholesterol and water clear yes singer and nicolson singer and nicolson gave the fluid mosaic model this is the fluid mosaic model of by given by singer and 
Nicholson, which is a quasi fluid in nature. Why is it quasi fluid? Because it shows movement within the layer and also in between the layers. Between the layers is called as your flip flop movement, which is very rarely seen in the case of your lipids. And this flip flop movement is absent, completely absent in the case of your proteins. Proteins will never show flip flop movement, but lateral movements is seen in the case of your lipids and proteins. Clear? Clear, everyone? Any doubt here? The next function that is, I told you, this lipid plasma membrane can show different type of movement. That is, it can show passive transport and also active transport. What is passive transport? Movement of neutral solutes along the concentration gradient, no energy requirement by a simple diffusion movement of molecules. What about active transport? In case of your active transport, movement of non-polar solutes because your plasma membrane will not allow. So non-polar solutes need to enter. They will enter against the concentration gradient and they need to use ATP that is tra trans transport such as K Na plus and Ka plus pump. This you are lucky. I, you are unlucky because I won't be able to teach you how the pump works. That is three protons going out, three Na plus going inside, two K plus going outside, transport in plants gone. Then it is energy dependent that is ATP is required and the entire plasma membrane is selectively permeable. Plasma membrane is selectively permeable. Clear? Clear? Any doubt here? Any doubt here? Can I write down certain other functions also? Can I write down other functions also here? The other functions of your plasma membrane, the no clear means you have doubt. Huh? Any doubt here? Look at the chat. Let me look at the chat. Let me talk to all of you. Any doubt here? Ask me right now. Obviously, the first function which is already written down is your movement of proteins. Is the movement of proteins nana means clear oh nana means clear okay 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 are you writing down students are you making your own notes tell me that are you making your own notes rupa shoeb shvitu prasad all of you miss sharat where is sanvi where is crazy are all of you making your notes today are all of you making the notes tell me fast the cell membrane is also involved in your endo endocytosis endocytosis that is bringing stuff inside the cell they take the things bring it inside the cell that is endocytosis okay they are also involved in the cell division also involved in the cell division that is division of your cytoplasm happens plasma membrane also involved in cell division the cell can cell your plasma membrane can also become also secrete some things that, that is they can become secretion involved in the secretion Running notes with me, all of you. The so, flip-flop movement is not protein because they are not by they are not bilayer, sir. The reason the flip-flop protein is not in the case of your internal. See, can you see? This is the entire big structure. Ma, this is the entire big structure. If this will completely flip over, the model will only become the entire plasma will be disintegrate. This protein is part of your. See, it is completely present between the layer. If this shows flip-flop, na. The entire plasma membrane will become destabilized. So, proteins will not show flip flop movement. Clear? Will not show flip flop movement. We have a Basmaraju also. Good evening. Yes. <laughs> Good evening to you. Okay. Clear? Now, that was your plasma membrane. Then we have the cell wall now. Okay. Then we have the cell wall. Now, Let's understand cell wall one by one. Every point I'll make you write down as such how I'm making you write from that time. Okay. Can we start? Can we start the plus? We can, can we start the cell wall? Can we start the cell wall? A quick. I told you a doubt, no? I told you a doubt. I am taking, I am known for taking doubts. I take all the doubts in the chat. No doubt. Let's go to cell wall. Now, in the case of your cell wall, in the case of cell wall, First point, tell me everyone, is this living 
or is it non-living? The cell wall is said to be a non-living. It is a dead. It is non-living in nature. It is protective in nature. Non-living and protective nature. That is, it is very rigid. It is very rigid. It is completely non-living. It main function is protection. The main function is protection. That is, it forms the outer covering. It forms the outer covering to the plasma membrane. It forms the outer covering to the plasma membrane. Now, do we find cell wall in the case of animals? No, sir. Animals do not have any cell wall. So, where do you find cell wall? Cell wall is mainly found in the case of your plants. Mainly found in the case of your plant cells. In the case of fungi. In the case of some protist. Some protist can also we find the cell wall. Now, this some protest, honestly, I don't know. I forgot the example. I was trying to remember from past two, you know, because I know. See, the thing is, when you're teaching, you know what is the next slide, what you want to prepare. But some protest, I forgot which protest has the cell wall. Let me know in the comment section which is the protest which has the cell wall. Clear? That is your cell wall, basic functions out of cell wall. Now, what is the function of cell wall, sir? Can you tell me one proper function of cell wall? Proper functions of cell wall? If they ask you proper functions of cell wall, the main function of a cell wall is shape and rigidity. Shape and rigidity to the cell. So cell wall actually maintains the complete structure of your cell wall. That is, it gives the rigidity to the cell. It also gives protection, which we have all been learning. It provides protection. Provides protection. That is, protects the proto plasm it protects the protoplasm what is the protoplasm protoplasm is the living part of the cell that is plasma membrane plus plasma membrane plus the cytoplasm everything in the cytoplasm is called as protoplasm protection okay then it also acts as a barrier in some cases yes it acts as a barrier that is it counteracts osmotic pressure it counters Osmotic pressure. Well, I forgot really what is osmosis. All of you know what is osmosis. Osmosis is the movement of water from the higher concentration to the lower concentration. Okay. <laughs> that is osmosis. Os barrier counters the osmotic pressure. Does it also prevent from prevent from cell burst? That is, it prevents the cell from completely bursting. Rephrase this is the grammatical error here. Rephrase it, okay? It prevents the cell from completely bursting. And it also involved in cell to cell interaction. I love this in this chapter. It is also involved in the cell to cell interaction. That is the function of the cell wall. Now, what is the cell wall made up of? What is the cell made up of? What is the cell made up of? Anyone tell me in the chat. In the case of fungus, in the case of fungus, the cell wall is made up of what? It is made up of your chitin. In the case of fungus, it is made up of chitin. Now, what about your plant? In the case of plant, it is made up of cellulose. All of you know. It is made up of cellulose. It is made up of hemicellulose. Hemicellulose. It is also made up of your pectins. Yes. Presence of pectins and also certain types of proteins are also present in the case of your cell wall, in the case of your plants. Now, what about algae? Now, this is where a lot of information all of you need to remember. I am writing it down. Please write down and remember these points. In the case of algae, in the case of algae, it is made up of again cellulose, but it is also made up of, it is also made up of galactans. Galactans. It is also made up of manans. Manans. It is also made up of calcium carbonate. It is also made up of calcium carbonate. So the algal cell wall is made up of cellulose, galactans, manans, as well as calcium carbonate. In the case of fungus, it is made up of chitin. In the case of plants, it is made up of cellulose, hemicellulose, pectins, and proteins. This is the cell wall composition. Cell wall composition. Now, this is the important part which I have written down already here. 
there are different types of cell walls that is there are layers of cell wall there are different layers of cell wall for example there is something called as primary cell wall there is secondary cell wall there is something called as middle lamellae there is plasmodesmata now let's understand the primary cell wall now what is the primary cell wall now this primary cell wall is the first formed cell wall it is the first formed cell wall and this cell wall is present in the young plants present in the young plants that is it is capable of growth and gradually diminishes as the cell matures it is present in the young plants it is capable of growth this cell wall is capable of growth and gradually diminishes as the cell is maturing now what about your secondary cell wall secondary cell wall is present produced later on that is formed on the inner side of the plasma membrane that is present inside the primary cell wall we have the second let me draw this for you let me draw this for you so we have your one cell here the outer covering is the primary cell wall now inner to the primary cell wall we have the secondary cell wall to the inner to the primary cell wall now inner to that also sometimes we can have what tertiary cell wall can also be present here now for example there is one more cell here yes primary cell wall now between the two cells between the two cells there is a middle layer this middle layer between the two cells is called as your middle lamellae it is called as what middle lamella it's called as middle lamella clear and this middle lamella is made up of calcium pectate and also magnesium pectate magnesium pectate holds adjacent cells together so what is middle lamella it is a it is a structure which is present between the two cells which holds the complete two cells clear see this is a plant cell plant cell middle lamella is present between the two plant cells now what is your plasmodesmata what is plasmodesmata plasmodesmata is basically your uh, cytoplasmic structures intercellular cytoplasmic connections and see can you see two plant cells are connected together two plant cells are connected together with the help of plasmodesmatal connections which help in exchange of material to help in exchange of material they have the plasmodesmatal connections clear plasmodesmatal connections now students listen to me very carefully now this secondary cell wall is it permeable see primary cell wall is little permeable primary cell wall is little permeable it can allow certain exchange but your secondary cell wall secondary cell wall is not permeable it is not permeable why because of the depositions we know in the case of secondary cell wall there is lignin deposition yes pectin deposition suberine deposition in the case of secondary cell wall that is why secondary cell wall becomes impermeable it becomes what impermeable completely is it elastic your secondary cell wall is non elastic in nature it is completely non elastic in nature non elastic nature why because of the suberine depositions because of the lignin depositions suberine lignin deposition it is completely non elastic in nature non permeable in nature clear amazing amazing sir how plasmodesmata is suddenly formed plasmodesmata is not suddenly formed it is always there it is always there from the cell clear any doubt here now here i all of you want to can i erase this below part can i erase this below part yes can i erase this below part now i told you i spoke about cell wall from that time i spoke about cell wall from that time now this cell wall this cell wall i told you it is completely impermeable yes but if it is secondary wall is impermeable if it is completely impermeable how will the exchange happen can anyone tell me in the chat yes secondary is dead now i told you secondary cell wall is impermeable dead and everything but then if it is impermeable 
how will the exchange happen? Can anyone tell me in the chat? How will the exchange will happen here? The exchange will happen here because of there are certain gaps. There are certain gaps in the secondary cell wall here. There are certain gaps here in the deposition. And this gaps in the deposition is called as your pits. They are called as what? Pits. Very important point which I, I taught you in the anatomy also. In the anatomy we learned that there are pits are present. Fielded pits are present in the cell wall here. And because of these pits there can be connections formed. And these pits are dead. Remember they are dead. Ever. But is there any living connection here? Is there any living connection? Yes, students, there is also a form of living connection here. That is one plant cell to the next plant cell, the ER, that is endoplasmic reticulum. The ER has a connection, that is between the two cells. ER of one cell is connected to the ER of another cell. And this connection is called as your desmotubule. It is called as what? Desmotubule. And this is the living connection. Desmotibule is the living connection. Living connection. Desmotibule is the living connection. This is the dead connection. This is the dead connection. Pits are the dead connection which help in the exchange of things. Then we have desmotibule which has the living connection that is a connection between the ERs. Connection between the ER. Pits. Any doubts in the pits? Tell me right now. What are pits? Pits are the gaps in the cell wall deposition. I told you the secondary cell wall is non-elastic because of the superior ligand deposition. In the deposition, there are small, small gaps. Those gaps are called as pits. P-I-T-S. They are called as what? Pits. Any doubt here? Any doubt here? Ask me right now. Let me look at the chat. Any doubt? Is my voice audible or all of you are sleeping? All of you are, you know, writing down notes still. What are you doing? Tell me first. We have the living connections. We have the dead connection here. And this plasmodesmata, they help in the collecting, connecting the different cytoplasms. Okay. Okay, sir. Clear, sir. Show some energy. Show something. Why all of you are so dead here, everyone. Like, just like your cell wall. All of you are just like the cell wall. Try to become plasma membrane sometime. Try to become plasma membrane. Now, let's study about the endomembrane system. Before we study endomembrane system, can we have a 10 minutes break? Tell me in the chat. I am not tired. You might be tired. You are writing from that time. My hand is hurting. See, I am not used to writing so much. So, can we have a 10 minutes break before we start endomembrane system? Yes. Can we? Or a 5 minutes break? Tell me 5 or 10 minutes break. Tell me. I would like to take 5 minutes break because I want to drink some water. I want to drink some water here. So let's take a five minutes break, all of you. Five minutes. Break. Amazing. Now the time here is nine two. Let's take the break till nine ten. Till nine ten. What am I doing? Till nine ten. Break till nine ten. Let's take an eight minutes break. Break till nine ten. Okay. okay, so 8.10, ah, my mind is so numb, I'm not able to see the time also, 8.10, not 9.10, 8.10, okay, till 8.10 the break, okay, so after that we will start the, let me see the live chat here, have you not liked the video, all of you not like the video, huh? still, so much of hard work, so much of writing I'm doing, no, amazing all of you are, so we will do endomembrane system that is your mitochondria, Golgi bodies, everything, vacuoles, everything we will do around just slowly writing every point. Okay. Now students let me know chat how is this this form of teaching. Usually this is a much more usually you see me you know teaching with a lot of energy telling a lot of points but today I am talking very slow very calm and uh, we are writing more today. Okay. So 10 minutes break let me know in the comment section. How is the today's session also right now? Okay.
Hello, 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 hello. What time is not obvious till long? Hello, 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 hello. Raise everything on the slide. Ah. Students, Shreya, I just met Shreya sir outside. I went out of the small pod here. Shreya sir is sitting outside. He is like, you know, full tension, Shreya sir is, and he's solving JE paper constantly. So that's why. <laughs> hello, hello, welcome back, everyone. <clears throat> hello, hello, Pinku, hello. Spanda, hello. Hello, Navina, welcome to the class. <laughs> Is everyone back? Is everyone back? Is everyone back? Tell me fast. We have two more minutes. Oh, okay. We have two more minutes. Let everyone come back. After two more minutes, we'll start. I told you on promise. Let us after two minutes, we start. Ah. Um, we are coming. Yes, yes. All of you join fast. Join, 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 join. Students, do not forget to like the video. Do not forget to like the video, do not forget to share the video as much as possible because these are the detailed notes. Like, you know, I am not even missing every, if you open your NCRT right now and see the notes what you have written right now. Compare both the things, compare your NCRT and compare your notes. Every single line is covered there. Here and there, one more point we've missed, but every single line is covered. Okay. Spanda, see, my, I don't know, where did I keep my glasses? The thing is, I cannot see here very clearly, it's very far power now old age so can we start back everyone back with the josh can we start tell me we can start right give me some blue hearts no blue hearts green hearts we are botany give me some green hearts in the chat we will start the endomembrane system now endomembrane system now in endomembrane system endomembrane system we have certain organelles we have certain organelles the first organelle when your endomembrane system is your endoplasmic reticulum this endoplasmic reticulum yes it is endoplasmic reticulum that is also called as your er in endoplasmic reticulum we both have, we have two types that is your smooth as well as rough smooth as well as rough endoplasmic reticulum then we also have your golgi complex we also have the golgi complex Apart from Golgi complex, we have lysosomes, suicidal bags, lysosomes, the suicidal bags. Apart from lysosomes, we also have the vacuoles. We also have the vacuoles. Now, why do we call them endomembrane? The reason we call endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, lysosomes and vacuoles as endomembrane is because their functions are coordinated. Why do we call them? Because their functions are coordinated. Functions are coordinated here. Every single function here is coordinated between the different organelles. That is why they are called as endomembrane system. Yes. Now, do we have what? What, oh, 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 oh. what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? What is this extra zoom? Oof, got me scared. Now, do we have what about other organelles? What about the other organelles such as your mitochondria? Such as your mitochondria? Mitochondria, chloroplast, and also peroxisomes. Peroxisomes. What are they called as? Are they also your endo, uh, endo, they also, they are also called as endo, endo, endo membrane system? Nope. They're not called as endo membrane system because their functions are not coordinated. Because their functions are not coordinated here. Clear? Functions are not coordinated. In the case of mitochondria, chloroplast and proxisomes, no proper coordination. They're not part of your endo membrane. So if, if I ask you a question, which of the following member, which the following organ is not an endomembrane system? Yes, I'll give you not an endomembrane system. I'll give you three examples. One will be odd and out. You should be able to tell which is the odd one 
out. Now they will ask you direct question. Call key apparatus complex lysosome vac vacuoles. Then they'll give you end. Uh, they'll give you ER call key and lysosomes. And then they'll give you mitochondria. Tell me which make reticulum, endoplasmic reticulum. Now if you look at another electron microscope, if you look under the electron microscope, if you look at under the electron microscope inside the cell, we find a very large network, right? We form a very large or reticular structure. We get a large network or reticulum of tiny tubular structures, not structure, tiny tubular structures. This network of tiny tubular or reticular structure is called as a thing, but is your endoplasmic reticulum. So what is endoplasmic reticulum? Endoplasmic reticulum is a network of you know, a complete network or reticulum of tiny tubular structure which is present inside the cytoplasm, which is present in the cytoplasm. Now, one extra point which I have to uh, teach you here is from the diagram. If this is the endoplasmic reticulum, this is the nucleus, this is the nucleus. Can you see from the outer layer of the nucleus, from the outer layer of the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum is forming. So can I write a point? Can I write a point that is, it is a next extension. It is an extension of the nucleus. It's an extension of nucleus. That is endoplasmic reticulum is a complete extension of the outer layer of, layer of the nucleus. Now, that is your extension of nucleus. Now, said you know, this particular endopla endoplasmic reticulum is it completely scattered or do they have a particular shape they're completely scattered also they're completely scattered clear now all of you are following or all of you are, the chat is so you know so quiet today i am not seeing any uh, response from the this thing only no response in the chat. Tell me first. Now your entire endoplasmic reticulum can be divided into two different parts. Before I tell you the division, let me draw the structure here. If you want the structure, this is the nucleus. This is the extra. This is how the endoplasmic reticulum will look like. Endoplasmic reticulum will look like. And towards the end, your endoplasmic reticulum has three different structures. That is, this can you see this extra tube like structure that is called as your cisternae called as cisternae then this particular endoplasmic reticulum can also be tubular also it can also be tubular in nature it can also form certain vesicles it can also form certain vesicles that is your endoplasmic reticulum so endoplasmic reticulum is nothing but a network of reticulate of any tiny tube like structures it is an extension of your nucleus and it is completely scattered. It is completely scattered. Now, if you look at the structure here, it is made up of tubular structure called cisternae. It, is, it has a tubular structure here. Can you see tubular structure here? And it also has vesicles. It also has vesicles. Now, entire of your endoplasmic reticulum is divided into two different types. That is, the first type is your endoplasmic reticulum plus ribosomes if there are ribosomes present on the endoplasmic reticulum it is called as rough endoplasmic reticulum and if the endoplasmic reticulum does not have any ribosomes that is no ribosomes it is called as smooth endoplasmic reticulum now both rough as well as smooth endoplasmic reticulum has different functions for example, your rough endoplasmic reticulum. Can you see? It is rough in nature. This is your smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Rough endoplasmic reticulum is continuous with outer membrane of your nucleus. Yes, it is a continuous in the outer membrane nucleus. It is associated with ribosomes. Already told you. Ribosomes on ER involved in protein synthesis. That is the main function. Main function of your rough endoplasmic reticulum is protein synthesis. It is protein synthesis. Mainly composed of 
sister name. Now, what about smooth endoplasmic reticulum? Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is continuous from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Remember, smooth is continuous from the rough, not associated with the ribosomes. It is involved in synthesis of lipids, mainly composed of tubules. It is other than the lipids. It is involved in the synthesis of lipids. Apart from lipids, apart from lipids, it also produces certain steroidal hormones. It also involved in the steroidal hormones. It produces lipids as well as steroid hormones. Steroid hormones such as your progesterone, testosterone is involved. Production of testosterone. Now the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is also involved in the toxic drugs purification. One second, students. Let me write down properly. It is also involved in the also involved in the detoxification detoxification clear involved in the detoxification of drugs where in the case of liver in the case of liver it is involved in the detoxification of drugs now quickly tell me in the chat how many of you how many of you have studied locomotion chapter tell me in the chat right now how many of you have done the locomotion chapter done and dusted can you how many of you can tell me if you can tell me Locomotion is done and dusted in the muscle contraction. We learn about in the contraction of muscles, there is involvement of endoplasmic reticulum. Remember that in endo in uh, there's involvement of endoplasmic reticulum, especially it was smooth endoplasmic reticulum was involved here because smooth endoplasmic reticulum was also involved in the muscle contraction. I'm connecting the chapters now. That is, it opens up and closes calcium channels. The calcium channels open up, there is contraction is happening. Yes. So smooth endoplasmic reticulum is also involved in the muscle contraction. That is smooth endoplasmic reticulum releases or completely releases or taking back the calcium ions of the calcium ions. Clear? Clear? Now, that is the end of your endoplasmic reticulum any doubt in endoplasmic reticulum ask me right now and if you open your ncrt right now you can find all of this information in your ncrt also that is electron microscope network reticular connection extension of nucleus scattered and it has sister name it has vesicle formation also tubular formation we have rough endoplasmic reticulum smooth endoplasmic reticulum functions is important here that is mainly composed of sister name and it is mainly composed of your tubules and it has lipids this is it is involved in the protein synthesis clear yes sacroplasmic reticulum yes sacroplasmic reticulum amazing all of you remember and if you have no actually some of you can ask this very quickly easily because on this channel also i have thought the must how many of you remember my chapter how many of you remember me teaching human physiology how many of you remember me teaching human physiology tell me first Priyadarshini, ask me a doubt. Ask me a doubt right now, Priyadarshini. Before we go to the Golgi bodies, ask me all the doubts right now. I will clear it then and now. Any doubt? No doubt? Amazing all of you are. If there is no doubt, I will go to the Golgi complexes now. Luminal part is not given. In, don't spend the Don't worry about the luminal part. Okay. Mm. Ah. If you want me to ask me luminal part here, see this inside part, luminal part. Uh, wait, I'll explain. What is this pen? The pen. See here, inside part. Inside part is called as your lumen part. Inside part is called lumen part. Outside part here, can you see this outside part? This outside part is called as extra lumen. Inside part is called as lumen. Extra part is called as extra lumen. Now this inside part and outside part are extremely different. They are extremely different here. Extremely 
different. So inside part is called as lumen, extra outer part is called extra lumen, and inside part lumen, extra power part, extra lumen are completely different from each other. Function wise, also extremely different. Clear? Clear? Tell me first. When I told about your rough and plasma spectrum, they are involved in the protein synthesis. Protein synthesis. Clear? Sir, mitochondria in the inner crystal, what will happen? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. When I, te when I teach about mitochondria, sir, in mitochondria, the inner crystal, what will happen? Are you are telling about inner crystal and outer crystal in case of mitochondria? Wait until we reach mitochondria. Wait until we reach mitochondria. I'll tell you what happens in the inner mitochondria. That is your oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation happens. Don't worry, I'll teach you what is oxidative phosphorylation. No, this is the thing. I am teaching something. You are asking some other doubt in mitochondria now. Wait until mitochondria. Clear? Now, I told you this. Can I teach you an extra point here? Can I teach you an extra point here? I told you this ribosomes are attached. Right? See, this is out of your NCRT. If you want, you can learn this. This extra information. Okay. I told you this ribosomes are attached on the ER. Yes, ribosomes are attached on the ER. But how are they attached? Do, is there any glue here? Yes, there is a glue here. The glue for attached, see, whatever out of NCLA, I write in red, okay. The glue here is a type of glycoprotein. It's a type of glycoprotein, which help in the attachment of the ribosomes on the ER. And this ribosome is called as riboporin. It's called as riboporin, okay, forin. Riboforin 1 and riboforin 2. They help in attachment. They help in attachment of the ribosomes onto the ER. Okay, clear. Now, Golgi complex, amazing. Hey, what is happening here? No, let's go to Golgi complex. Can we start Golgi complex now? Can we start the Golgi complex? Everyone in the chat. Now, <clears throat> Golgi complex was first discovered. Golgi complex was first discovered by none other than a, a scientist called as Camilio Golgi. By discovered by Camilio Golgi in the year 1898. Now, extra information here, I'll write in the red. He actually isolated the Golgi body from a nerve cell, from a nerve cell from the owl. Now, owl of the nerve cell, he isolated the Golgi complex. Clear? Owl of the nerve cell, he isolated the Golgi complex. Now, this Golgi complex, how did he observe? He, when he was staining, he was staining the cell. He noticed that particular portion of the endoplasmic reticulum was stained very densely. That is, densely, it was very densely, you know, so, so, you know, stained. That is, it was densely stained. Densely stained. Reticulate structure was found. Very densely staged reticular structure was formed near the nucleus. Near the nucleus. Now, what is this stain? This stain is a silver nitrate stain. Out of your NCRT, I'm telling you right here. Is the silver nitrate. Silver nitrate stain. Now, densely stain is found the Golgi complex. Now, if you want to look at the structure of the Golgi complex, he understood there is something called something very densely stained near the nucleus and he called it a reticular structure. He called it a nucleus. But if you look at the structure of the nucleus, if you look at the structure, sorry, if you look at the structure of a Golgi complex, it has a very flat like structure. It has a very flat structure. Yes. Can you see? It is very flat. It is very flat. It is very flat like structure. And it also, it is very disc shaped. Yes, it is very disc shaped in nature or it is also made up of cisternae not or it is also made up of cisternae here. Can you see? It is also made up of this is the cisternae. This is the cisternae here. Just like your endoplasmic reticulum, your Golgi complex also has cisternae here. Clear? Now, this cisternae has size that is given you NCR there is 0 0.5 micrometer to around um, one micrometer yes around one micrometer in the diameter that is the size of the cisterna here now if you look at the structure closely here are they parallel to each other can you see the cisterna are packed parallel to each other 
So can I write down Golgi complex? In Golgi complex, their sister nays stacked parallelly to each other. They are stacked very parallelly to each other. And if you look at in the same Golgi complex, the sister nay, that is sister nay, are arranged. You know, in a concentric manner, concentrically, they are arranged concentrically. See, one after another, parallelly they are arranged concentrically. These are the basic complex structure of your Golgi complex. So, Golgi complex was discovered by Camillo Golgi in the year 1898 in the nerve cell of the owl. He densely stained a reticular structure near the nucleus, which he later found it as a Golgi complex. It is a flat disc shaped or a cisternae structure. It has a cisternae. Golgi complex has a, a stalked parallel to each other and the sister and they are arranged in a concentrically manner. They are arranged in a concentrically manner. Now, if you talk about different types, that is, if you look at the structure of your Golgi complex, it has two different parts. A Golgi complex has two different, two different parts. The first part is your cis face. First part is your cis face. Can you see this is the cis face here. Other one is called as transphase. Now, what is this cis phase? Cis phase is the endoplasmic reticulum. See, this is the phase which is part of the endoplasmic reticulum. It is also called as convex stage. Can you see this convex stage or also called as forming phase or receiving end? Forming phase or receiving end. Now, why is it called as receiving end? Because this is called a receiving end because it receives vesicles. It receives vesicles from the ER. It receives proteins from the ER. It receives lipids from the ER. That is cis phase. So all the endoplasmic reticulum, the vesicles are received on the cis phase and they travel. They travel out like this and they get modified. That is, they get, they are coming out of the trans phase. When they are entering the cis phase, coming out from the trans phase. What is trans phase? It is facing the cytoplasm. Yes, this is the endoplasmic reticulum. This is the nucleus. This is facing the cytoplasm here. It is concave in nature. Yes, concave in nature or it's called as maturing phase. The reason it's called as maturing phase because the vesicles are matured here. Can you see vesicles are coming out? Vesicles are coming out. They are matured. Modified materials are packed and released from the trans phase. So the materials are entering the cis phase, but they're exiting the trans phase. They're packed nicely now, exiting the trans phase. Now, if you talk about the function, if you talk about the function here, the function here is very simple. The function is your packaging. The function is your packaging. Packaging material. Packaging material is the function. That is, it forms the vesicles. It forms the vesicles. Can you see? Vesicles are formed. Packaging is the first function. The second function is the, it forms glycoproteins. It forms the glycoproteins. That is, it does glycosylation. It does what? It does glycosylation. See this, this protein part is from the ER. This glycose, that is the sugar part, is from the Golgi complex. So Golgi complex is adding to the protein, making it glycoprotein. That is called as glycosylation. Then we also have something called as glycolipid formation also glycolipid formation glycolipid formation here the glycolipid formation is called as what glyco glycosidation it's called as glycosidation so again lipid is again coming from where smooth endoplasmic reticulum yes it's coming from smooth endoplasmic reticulum this glyco part is added by the the sugar part is added by the golgi complex so Golgi complex does the packaging material, it produces glycoproteins, it produces the glycolipids. Now, apart from that, it is also involved in the delivery. Yes, it is also your postman, your zomato driver, in and out of the cell. Also involved in the delivery of the substances from the in and out of the cell. Now, quickly tell me, that is the basic structure of your acrosome. The extra points I'll tell you. We'll do connect the chapters now. We'll do connecting the chapters game now. Where do you find Golgi complex in the human reproduction? Where do you find Golgi complex? 
sir how do they packaging packaging in the form of vesicles can you see these vesicles they form vesicles inside the vesicles they add the substances and they completely package it they completely package it okay now can you connect the chapters where do you find golgi complex in the case of your human reproduction tell me in the case of human reproduction did we learn about acrosome in human reproduction we learned about acrosome the cap like structure which is present on the sperm head the sperm head has the golgi complex sperm head has the golgi complex now in the case of your anatomy of flowering plants did i tell you the root cap the root cap also has golgi complex because the root cap will produce certain certain mucilaginous section substances which make sure the penetration of the root is easier into the soil and the root cap will be completely covered by a mucilage which makes sure the root can enter inside the soil easily those are two places where golgi complex is formed clear clear nice now let's go to the suicidal structure that is lysozymes now i told you this vesicle yes from golgi complex we have the vesicles we have a primary vesicle here yes this vesicle is also called as a primary lysosome now this primary lysosome is inactive in nature inactive enzyme it has all the inactive enzymes now this particular primary lysosome will only and only and only become active whenever there is food nearby so we add certain food here we add certain food now this primary lysosome becomes what primary lysosome becomes secondary lysosome and this secondary lysosome what does what it does phagocytosis it completely helps in digestion it helps in digestion it helps in removal of certain 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 substances it is involved in the exocytosis is involved in the exocytosis clear now but sir you told me what is a primary lysosome but you didn't tell me what is a lysozyme students lysozyme is actually lysozyme is actually a membrane bound organelle yes it is a membrane bound organelle yes membrane bound organelle now here the structure is formed the structure of lysosome is formed by processing the structure ouch the structure is formed by processing of the golgi bodies the structure here is formed because of the by process of packaging in golgi complex so entire lysosome is actually derived from the golgi complex that is the point which all of you need to remember as a basic so how is lysosome produced lysosome is produced as the lysosome is actually produced because of the from the golgi complex golgi complex will do what golgi complex will form vesicles that was packaging will happen that is your lysozymes now lysozyme forms what lysozymes has certain the important point here the very important point the important point here is lysosomal vesicles lysosomal vesicles has something called as hydrolytic enzymes as hydrolytic enzymes it has hydrolytic enzymes now there are multiple types of hydrolytic enzymes here so there's your proteases lipases glycosidases nucleases acid phosphate as well as sulfate all of these are different hydrolytic enzymes which is present inside the lysozyme and this lysozyme can completely digest the lysozyme can completely digest proteins lipids carbohydrates nucleic acid phosphates and sulfates it can completely digest it now what if a complete digestion is happening what if it is the what is the meaning of suicide bag now if the lysozyme itself becomes completely empty it will kill itself and also the other function of lysozyme is if there is old worn out organelles lysozyme will go and completely cover the old organelles such as your mitochondria is old you know aged uh, mitochondria it will go complete hug the mitochondria and 
kill it. Very sad it is. Very sad lysozyme is doing. That is the lysozyme. It is completely killing the phagocyte. It is completely killing the old burnout out organelles. Okay. Now let's start the vacuoles. Let's start the vacuoles. Clear? Students, are you writing down this all of this? Are you writing down this information or am I writing it for myself? Do you want this PDF? Tell me in the chat right now. Do you want this entire PDF or not? Do you want this PDF? Now, vacuoles are also your membrane bound organelles. Membrane bound organelles. <sighs> this particular writing like this is. It is a membrane bound organelle. Vacuole is again membrane bound or organelle. Now, you tell me in the chat. Vacuole, what does vacuole have? What can be present inside the vacuole? It is a membrane organelle. It is a membrane bound. You can also call it as a membrane bound space. Now, this vacuole has certain substance inside, such as it can has water, it can has sap, it can also have some ton excretory product. Yes, it can also have excretory brought inside the vacuoles. In the case of plants students, in the case of plants, in the case of plants, in plants, vacuole, vacuole makes up the 90% of cell volume. 90% of cell volume. Complete 90% of the cell volume is only and only the vacuole. Complete large vacuole. When we learned about the difference between your plants and animals, I dare I told you. In the case of plant cells, vacuoles are very large. Right? See, in vacuoles, 90% cell volume is vacuole. Now, in similarly, in the case of plants, in the case of plants, if you look at the cell, the entire of your vacuole has a thin membrane. The thin membrane of the vacuole is called as tono. Plast. Tonoplast is the membrane of the vacuole. So, membrane of the vacuole is called as tonoplast. Now, this tonoplast is very special. This tonoplast is very special. Why? Now, this tonoplast facilitates the transport of your number of ions. It transports, it facilitates transport of, active transport of many different ions inside the vacuole. Inside the vacuole against the concentration gradient against the concentration gradient it can transport different ions into the vacuole clear now what about the vacuoles in the case of your amoeba and uh, amoeba and other protesta in the case of amoeba vacuole is present that is contractile vacuole in the case of amoeba that is pseudo it does it does the number of nutrition the mode of nutrition in the case of your amoeba is uh, your uh, engulfing that is called as uh, what is that the mode of nutrition in amoeba holozoic the holozoic mode of nutrition in amoeba is because of the contractile vacuole that is it can completely move it can completely move that is import it is important for osmoregulation and as well as excretion in the case of amoeba now what about in the case of certain protesta protest such as such as your uh, paramecium in the case of paramecium there are certain food vacuoles are present. There are certain food vacuoles are present. So whenever there is a food, when whenever there is a food in the present, right in the outer surrounding, the food will be transported around the paramecium and it will be sent to the food vacuole. Inside the food vacuole, the food particles are completely engulfed. So in food vacuoles, in the case of amoeba, osmoregulation and excretion, and other food vacuoles are present in other protist also. Now. Now we come to the organelles with the DNA. Yes, unlike your nucleus, there are other organelles which also has DNA, such as your mitochondria, such as plastids. All of those also have the DNA. But let's start with the mitochondria now. Can we start with mitochondria? It's bound by a single layer. Yes, vacuole is bound by a single layer. Can we start with the mitochondria now? Mitochondria. Now, the first point of the mitochondria, all of you need to understand is. It is the powerhouse of the cell. All the memes, yes. Every physics fellow, every Jerry aspirant will also know this. It is the powerhouse of the 
cell. Now, why do we call mitochondria as a powerhouse? Everyone says it is a powerhouse, but no one is telling why is it a powerhouse? Yes, why is it a powerhouse of the cell? The reason it is power of the cell is because it is involved in the ATP production. That is it. It is involved in the oxidative, involved in the oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation. That is why it is called as powerhouse of the cell because all the ATP production is happening inside the mitochondria. Clear? But there are also there are other such structures such as cytoplasm also has ATP production, glycolysis. But major the ATP production inside the mitochondria. Clear? Now let's look at the structure of this. How does it look like? This looks like a sausage, right? Chicken sausage. So this looks like a sausage structure. It has a sausage structure. What about the diameter here? Sir, why is SCR directly attached to the nucleus, not rough endoplasmic reticulum? Here, let's go to the structure. See, this diagram here, which is given here, right? This is not attached here. It is coming from actually from the behind section. It is a 3D structure. The, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is actually coming from the behind. It is coming from the behind like this. And in some case, it can be attached. But most of the times, smooth endoplasmic reticulum is attached to the rough. This is a 3D structure. It is coming from the behind like that. Okay. Don't get confused. Maybe Now, this diameter here. Diameter here is nothing but 0 0.2 to uh, 0 0.7 micrometer. Just small, tiny micrometer it has. Now, in case of mitochondria, tell me in the chat right now. Do we have aerobic respiration or do we have anaerobic respiration? In the case of mitochondria, we observe aerobic respiration. It is the site for aerobic respiration. It is the site of aerobic respiration. Now tell me right now in the chat, does the mitochondria have a single membrane or does it have double membrane here? The here it is double membrane. It is double membrane structure here. It is a double membrane structure here. Double membrane structure here. Double membrane structure. Now, all of you take a pencil now. All of you keep the pen down. Take a pencil and draw the Take a pencil and draw the diagram of mitochondria. Basic diagram of mitochondria. Write down. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is one. Sometimes my brain doesn't brain. So brain is when brain is not braining, it just happens. Because I don't have NCIT next to me. I have should have kept my NCIT next to me. But okay. Now let's draw the structure. Okay, I can. Okay, calm down, calm down, all of you, calm down. I wrote, oh my god, I changed it. <laughs> so let's do the basic time of endometri uh, mitochondria. All of you write on the basic time of mitochondria now. Now I told you, mitochondria has two layers. Mitochondria has two layers. This is the outer layer. Yes, this is the outer membrane. This is the outer membrane. Now inside, inside we have a another membrane. So we have outer membrane and we have the inner membrane. This is the inner membrane here. So outer membrane and inner membrane. Now this outer membrane is said to be more permeable. It's said to be more permeable, which is not given in your NCRT, but you can write down this it is more permeable because it has something called as porins it has something called as porins in case of certain uh, bacterial structure it has porins that's why it is more permeable but your inner membrane the inner membrane is you know not permeable at all it is selectively permeable it is selectively permeable in nature and it is made up of proteins 
it is made up of proteins now here inside the inner membrane if you look at the inside the inner membrane there are certain racket like structures here there are certain racket shaped structures here there are certain racket shaped structure on the inner membrane on the inner membrane this racket shaped structure here this racket shaped structure are nothing but your f4 f0 protein f4 f1 protein f4 f1 protein clear it is f4 f1 protein now this f4 f1 protein is also called as what it is also called as elementary it is also called as elementary particle elementary particles also called as oxosomes oxo ox, ox, oxosomes it is also called as your f4 f1 particles it is also called as your atp synthesis also atp synthase it is the fifth complex in your electron transport chain fifth complex in your electron transport chain now this middle part is called as what matrix this is called as your cristae it is called as cristae now what is the function of cristae cristae again it increases the surface area now here do we have dna here yes sir inside the mitochondria we have the double stranded dna that is why mitochondria is also called as what semi autonomous semi autonomous organel that is what is called as semi autonomous organel because it is called semi autonomous organel because it can does most of its functions that is it has dna it can produce its own own protein if it has to produce its own protein does it have ribosomes yes sir it also has ribosomes also has ribosomes that is 70s ribosome is there that is why it is called as semi autonomous protein synthesis everything will happen inside the cell clear now this double cell dna does the histone protein the histone protein is completely absent here histone protein is absent here okay clear any doubt here any doubt in the structure here any doubt in the structure inner membrane outer membrane <coughs> which is more permeable and students remember in this matrix is there right this matrix has all the enzymes all the enzymes required for your what do i say um, krebs cycle right all the enzymes are there but there is not one enzyme one enzyme is present absent here except one enzyme can anyone in the chat tell me which enzyme is not produced in the matrix the one enzyme which is not produced in the matrix is nothing but your succinyl dehydrogenase succinyl dehydro genase enzyme succinyl dehydrogenase is not present in the case of your matrix clear clear that is very important point because this i told you also this 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 enzyme is involved both in your uh, glycolysis <coughs> in your uh, electron transport chain as well as your krebs cycle not glycolysis krebs cycle and electron transport chain clear any doubt in this particular uh, entire structure here any doubt in the structure here no doubt amazing see here outer membrane inner membrane outer membrane inner membrane inter membrane space is also present here matrix and cristae and this double stranded dna is circular in nature this double stranded dna is circular in nature now can we start with plastids now are we going can we have a chemical plastid can we start with plastids now now the first point about plastid the first point about plastid here is okay, let me go chat let me look at some doubts no doubt god so it is drying up big time no doubt okay students now let me tell you one point here for plastids do we find red structures 
दिस रेड स्ट्रक्चर्स आर नथिंग बट योर एफ ओ एफ वन पार्टिकल्स ऑक्सी ऑक्सो ऑक्सोम ऑक्सीजोम एलिमेंट्री पार्टिकल्स दिस सी कैन यू दिस रैकेट लाइक स्ट्रक्चर दिस नथिंग बट योर एफ ओ एफ वन एफ ओ एफ एफ नॉट एंड एफ एम प्रोटीन Remember in the ATP synthesis we learn about F O and F one they rotate ATP synthesis happen rotating ATP synthesis happening ATP synthesis happening ATP that is your racket that is called as elementary particles oxomeres or F O F one particles F O F one particles clear now plastids no no I'm feeling very I'm very feeling very uh, tired today. See the thing is I'm not used to sitting in front of the camera and uh, you know just writing like this. Usually what we do usually we have a session on the big board, right? The big board is taken up by Jay. So I'm writing the small this thing here. So I'm feeling a little tired today. I don't know why. I don't get tired usually when I walk around. I'm not walking around. That's why I'm feeling tired. I feel opposite. Tell me the opposite. No, plastid. Where do you find plastid? Tell me fast. Plastids are present in case of your plant cell. Yes. The present in the case of your plant cells and also in the case of euglenoids. Also in the case of euglenoids. They're present in the case of plant cells as well as your euglenoids. Now, this pigment, this plastids, right? This plastids have specific pigments. This plastids have very specific pigments, and this specific pigments will give very specific color. Very specific color. So plastids have specific pigments, and the specific pigments will provide specific color. Now there are three different types of pigments here. Three different types of pigments. The first pigment is your chlorophyll, which all of you know, all of you love, all of the plants love. Entire life on Earth is dependent on the chlorophyll. Then we have your carotenoids. Then we have the uh, chromoplast, which is carotenoids, a part of chromoplast. Which provide color. Then we also have leucoplast. We also have leucoplast. Clear? So specific specific pigments are present. We produce a specific color. We have specific pigments such as your chlorophyll, your chromoplast, as well as leucoplast is present. Now let's understand first about your chlorophyll. Let's understand about chlorophyll. Now this chlorophyll, what is the function? The chlorophyll has one function. That is Trapping sunlight, trapping sunlight. It is involved in the photosynthesis. Involved in the photosynthesis. Now chlorophyll. This should be chloroplast. This should be chloroplast. Should be chloroplast. Chloroplast. There are two types. One is your chlorophyll. One is your chlorophyll. Other one is your carotenoids. Other one is carotenoids pigments. Other one is your carotenoids pigments. Now chlorophyll is green color. Carotenoids provide orange color or some other substances. Then we have your chromoplast. Then we have the chromoplast. Chromoplast is also of two types. Chromoplast is of two types. One is your carotenes. The other one is your xanthophyll. The other one is your xanthophyll. Now both carotene and xanthophyll provide color. That is, it provides yellow color. It can provide orange or even red in some cases. That is your chromoplast. The last one is your leucoplast. Leucoplast. That is male. That is colorless in nature. In leucoplast, there are three types. The first one is your amyloplast. The second one is your elioplast. The last one is your alioplast. Aleroplast. Now, this leucoplast is mainly function as storage. Is the storage for example amyloplast amyloplast is involved in the store so storage of your carbohydrates yes carbohydrates example is potato potato now what about elioplast elioplast main function is storing of oil 
storing of oil and fats what about angioplast it stores proteins it stores protein clear it stores protein so this is the entire plast which is present here we have the chloroplast that is trapping of light photosynthesis we have chloroplast then we have your chloroplast that is catenoid pigments then we have chromoplast that is keratinins and xanthophils that is provide color that is xanthophil orange or red then we have leucoplast which produces colorless that are colorless and are for storage that is amyloplast elioplast and eleuroplast amyloplast storage is carbohydrates elioplast is your storage of oil and fats Aleuroplast is storage of proteins. That is the different types of plaster. Now, there's one type of plaster which you have to study in detail. That is your chloroplast. Ready? So, chloroplast, if you look at the stru structure of your chloroplast, again, it has an outer membrane. It has an inner membrane. Outer membrane and inner membrane. And this outer membrane and inner membrane, it has a coin-like structure. Can you see this coin-like structure, structure which, which is called as thalacoins the coin like structure which has the chlorophyll in in this chlorophyll is present on this coin like structure that is called as thalocoid then we have the entire stack of coins the entire stack of four coins is called as granum the entire stack of thalacoid is called as granum now the middle layer is called as your middle matrix is called as stroma it is also like the matrix here matrix here then between the two between the two thylakoid between the two grana the connection you see the connection between the two is called as stroma lamellae stroma lamellae now if you look at the inside the thylakoid inside the thylakoid there is space called as lumen inside the thylakoid there is space called as lumen and students remember if you look, remember the photosynthesis in higher plants i told you in the thylakoid what happens in the thylakoid light reaction takes place light reaction happens in the thylakoid and in the case of stroma dark reaction takes place here dark reaction takes place here clear because all the enzymes are present here all enzymes are present in the case of your stroma that is the complete structure of your chloroplast the next concept here we have ribosomes the next concept we have the ribosomes the ribosomes was first discovered by your george george uncle george paladin in the year let me remember george paladin in the year 18 no no 1950 1950 somewhere 1950s i don't know the date in 1950s in the 1950s george paladin discovered the ribosome that is he understood that is he found it in the animal cell he found the animal cell but were there any what about the plant cell who identified in the plant cell in the plant cell there was some, someone called as robinson robinson and brown just a color name robinson brown in the case of your plant cell they found the ribosome okay ribosome 1953, huh? yes, 1953. Difficult to remember sometimes. 1953. Okay, 1953. So, but what is the ribosome made up of? Ribosome is actually made up of, ribosome is made up of your RNA plus protein. The entire ribosome is made up of RNA plus protein. Clear? And entire ribosome is made up of two subunits. That is a large subunit and a smaller subunit. If you look at the types of ribosomes, we have 70S and 80S. 70S in the case of prokaryotes, which is divided into 30 and 50. Then we have 80S in the case of eukaryotes, which is divided into 60 as well as 40. 60 as well as 40. What is this S? S is nothing but your sedimentation coefficient, also called as Sedberg constant or Sedberg unit. Clear? Now we understand the cytoskeleton. Now your entire body is made up of, entire body has a skeleton, that is the bones. You have the bones. Similarly, your plants, uh, or your, similarly in the case of cell, cell also has a bone, that is 
outer skeleton of the cell is called as cytoskeleton. So what is cytoskeleton? Cytoskeleton is a complete for to mention here ribosome i told you i told you i told you starting only here told you starting starting only they do not have no membrane there is no membrane here and this ribosome is found where in both they are found in both pro and eukaryotes clear what are cytoskeleton cytoskeleton is a network they basically network you see this different different type of network network of filamentous network of filamentous proteinaceous structure proteinaceous structure so this this is the entire cytoskeleton of a cell the entire cytoskeleton structure is a network of filamentous protein structure now what are these protein structure the first one is your microtubules is the micro tubules can you see can you see a layer of microtubules here entire layer of microtubules will be there apart from microtubules there is nothing but uh, there are microfilaments there are microfilaments then we have micro microfilaments and also intermediate filaments microfilaments as well as intermediate filaments inter mediated filaments so we have microfilaments intermediate filaments and microtubules all three together all the three came together from they're present in the cytoplasm they form the entire exoskeleton of the exoskeleton of the cell now what are the functions here quickly tell me the functions obviously the main function here would be mechanical support yes the main function here would be mechanical support Apart from that, can it also provide motility? Yes, because it can help in the movement inside the cell. It is also gives the cell shape. It also provides cell shape. Also, can can I say maintaining the cell shape? Maintaining the cell shape. That is the cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton. Clear? Chemical composition varies but not distinctively. The main difference in the prokaryotes and eukaryotes, the ribosome is basically the, uh, uh, the sediment, the units. Clear? Now, let's talk about cilia and flagella. What is cilia? Cilia helps in fixing and movement. That is, it is a short hair like process. It has or like movement. Now, what is the meaning of or? How many of you have gone for that boat riding? When you go for boat riding, no? you are not boat. The kayaking or you know the river rafting. When you go for river rafting, that has a pad, right? There is a complete movement of pad. That is the or like this. Let's say this now. Helps in movement. That is the or. So it has an or like movement. That is hair like process. And it is a very short. While the flagella, flagella is a very long structure. It is a whip like structure, see whip like structure, and this prokaryotic flagella is different from the eukaryotic flagella. See, remember in prokaryotic flagella, we learned about the basal body, the hook, and the filament. In the case of eukaryotic flagella, it is completely different. Now, let's look at the structure of your let's look at the structure of your flagella here. In the case of your eukaryotes, in the case of eukaryotes. <clears throat> in the case of eukaryotes, that is flagella here. In the case of eukaryotes, the flagella here is present on the plasma membrane. Yes. And this flagella has an inner core. The inner core here is called as what? The inner core is called as your axonema. The inner, you need any doubt? Is called as axonema. Now, uh, and it also has, apart from the core, it also has certain micro uh, it also has microtubules. Now, these microtubules are of two types. 
one magnetic which is present on the periphery called as radially microtubules which are present on the outside microtubules present on the outside that is and then we have the centrally micro tubules look at the diagram here you will understand better look at the diagram you will understand better now there are two types of see entire this is the plasma membrane told you already it has peripheral microtubules so peripheral microtubules are present in doublet peripheral microtubules are present in the doublet then this peripheral microtubules are connected to each other by interdigitated bridge also called as linkers also called as linkers each of them are attached here with the help of linkers now then we have central microtubules the central microtubules is called as central microtubule central microtubule has a central sheet through which it is attached and through the central sheet there is something called as radial spoke is arising from the peripheral tubule from the peripheral tubule a radial spoke is coming out can you see radial spoke is coming out that is attached to the central sheet so in total the arrangement here is 9 plus 2 arrangement that is 9 peripheral microtubules which are present in doublet and 2 central micro tubules 2 central micro tubules clear that is the entire structure of the flagella see if you look at the, under the electron microscope you look at this see so cute it is under the electron microscope see can you see doublet of your peripheral microtubules central to microtubules yes central to microtubules clear now that is the radial that is 9 plus 2 arrangement this is 9 and this is 2 clear now we have few more concepts that is centrosome and centrioles clear i am not tired my throat is very dry my throat is very dry don't worry rest of things have uh, i knew i predicted right by the end of this my hand will start hurting from all the writing because can you see this what do i have here to write can you see this small small the small book thing i have on this i write there is no way to know what i am writing so that's why it's going on the small thing i write here that is why my hand is hurting a lot now that's why i predicted it from here onwards from here onwards it's going to be a little bit printed notes okay now what is centrosome what is a centrosome now listen to me very carefully first of all centrosome is only centrosome is only found in the case of your animals it is found only in the case of animals and it is made up of two units so one centrosome is made up of how many units it is made up of two different centrioles so one centrosome is made up of two centrioles two centrioles and these two centrioles can you see they are perpendicular to each other and they get a 90 degree here yes they are perpendicular to each other and they form a 90 degree like this and they do they show a cartwheel arrangement they show a cartwheel arrangement now each centriole is made up of nine peripheral fimbrils that is tubules just like how when we had in flagella here also we have nine you can see one two three four five six seven eight nine two three four five six uh i missed one one six uh three four five six seven eight nine nine different peripheral tubules what about inside inside is completely empty this is nine plus zero arrangement here now each fibril can you see this each fibril is made up of triplet microtubules in flagella it was doublet here it is triplet can you see three one two three one two and three here so each fibril each fibril is made up of three tubules here each fiber is made up of three tubules here pebbles are made in made up of tubulin tubulin protein and this entire thing is called as centrosome that is one centrosome is made up of two centro centrioles one centrosome is made up of two centrioles which has 
नाइन पेरीफेरी फाइब्रिल्स ईच फाइब्रिल हैज थ्री माइक्रो ट्यूब्यूल्स इट्स ट्रिपलेट इन नेचर ना लुक एट द स्ट्रक्चर हियर अगेन वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन नाइन पेरीफेरी माइक्रो ट्यूब्यूल्स ईच माइक्रो ट्यूब्यूल इज मेड अप ऑफ ट्रिपलेट माइक्रो ट्यूब्यूल Each fibril is made up of triplet triplet microfibril. In center, in center we have proteinaceous hub. The central region is called as a hub. Then hub is connected to the fibrils. The hub is connected to the fibrils with the help of spokes. Can you see the spokes here? These are the spokes. No tubules in center. Nine plus zero arrangement. From the from the spindle fibers in animals during the cell division. So what is the function? The function of your centrioles is formation of spindle fibers in the case of during the cell division they form the spindle fibers they also form the basal body of cilia and flagella they form the basal body in the cilia and flagella clear now let's go to the last topic for today the last topic for today is your nucleus can we start nucleus now can you get some energy last part of today's chapter is nucleus i see there are only 22 people i know See students, the only thing matters here is consistency. I may be tired, I may be completely exhausted, but will I stop teaching? No, because I, we made a promise here. Because we are making one short sessions, I want to include every single information which is given you NCERT in one shot. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Doesn't matter how long it takes. We are here to finish everything. And students, don't worry, sir. I could not write all this information. Don't worry. All this information will be given to you in the form of PDF. If you are not able to write this last part, everything will be given in the form of PDF to you. Don't worry about that. All that matters here is you are learning. I am teaching, and which is helping one step. It's not even a big step. One step towards your clearing the NEET examination. Okay. Now let's start with the nucleus. Now let's start with the nucleus. Now all I have been, always been telling. I have. I'll take a sip of water after this. Lie like flow. I'll take a sip of water. This. I'll finish this nucleus. Now, students, listen to me very carefully. Nucleus is is actually the brain. Nucleus is the brain of the cell as it controls whole cell and its functions. It's called the brain of the cell. It contains genetic material. That is, if you ask me where is the genetic material, the entire genetic material is found inside the nucleus that is a dna it is a double membrane structure that is outer membrane is associated with the ribosomes i've always told you and it continues with the endoplasmic reticulum so outer membrane of the nucleus is continuous with the endoplasmic reticulum it is also associated with ribosomes what about the inner membrane the inner membrane the two membranes separated by a fluid filled then we have inner membrane outer membrane and inner membrane the two membranes separated by a fluid filled perinuclear space so between the two membrane between the two membrane here inside there is a perinuclear space here the membranes are not continuous what do i mean membranes are not continuous look at the diagram here this is a nuclear membrane and this is the nuclear membrane nuclear membrane outer membrane and inner membrane Yes. Now this outer membrane, inner membrane is not continuous. In certain places, we have something called as nuclear pore. Why? Because the transportation in and out of the nucleus should happen, right? The transportation between in and out of the nucleus happens at the nuclear pore. So nuclear pore is present. Small gaps in the nuclear membrane helps in the communication with cytoplasm. And inside the matrix, the matrix of your nucleus is called as nucleoplasm and inside the nucleus the large central very prominent structure is called as nucleolus this is the site of site of ribosome synthesis ribosome synthesis ribosome synthesis then we have the free floating chromatin what is chromatin loose chromato chromosomes Loose chromosome is called as chromatin. Then we have something called as nucleoplasm. I told you, protoplasm of the nucleus. Protoplasm of the 
nucleus is also called as your chiroplasm it is a jelly like matrix it contains lipids water proteins and dissolved ions has nucleolus now what is this nucleus i told you nucleolus is suspended along with the chromatin so inside the nucleus we find the <coughs> nucleolus as well as the chromatin now nucleolus is the site of your ribosome synthesis it's a dense spherical structure in the nucleoplasm not bound by the membrane very important line very important line it is not it is completely free floating okay it is composed of dna rna and proteins site of ribosome assembly thin thread like network of nuclear proteins are present it contains dna rna basic histone proteins and also non histone proteins are also present non histone proteins are present clear non histone proteins are also present inside the clear i i told you in the starting your red blood cells red blood cells completely lack the nucleus they completely lack the nucleus now this chromatin has what chromatin has dna or and basic histone protein which you'll be learning in your other chapter that is in the case of your molecular device of inheritance the complete histone protein and the complete coverage okay now chromosome forms the formed by the condensation of chromatin Chrom chromatin is a thread like structure loose but when the cr chromatin condenses we get the Sir, if nucleus has this many, this much of, so if nucleus has this much of significance, then how non-nucleus cells perform these functions? Now, I'll tell you, Gautam, tell me, or I was going to write your name, in your RBC, they lack nucleus, they lack nucleus. Now, what is the function of RBC? Now, I've told you in the starting, RBC is a cell. Where only and only glycolysis happen, there is no Krebs cycle as well as there is no complete absence of electron transport chain. Because whenever there is a lack of nucleus, the cell will perform other function. For example, RBC will function of transportation of your hemoglobin. Yes, transportation of hemoglobin, that is transportation of oxygen with the help of hemoglobin. Even in the case of CO tubes, even in the case of your CO tubes the nucleus is absent their main function is conduction main function is conduction so whenever the nucleus is absent the function becomes completely varied clear now what is chromatin that is dna plus histone protein plus non histone proteins plus rna that is your chromatin so during the interface it exists as chromatin because it is an indistinctive network of nucleoprotein fibers so during the interface what is the meaning of interface when the cell is not dividing not dividing stage not dividing stage we can find the chromatin now chromosome has two chromatids can you see a chromosome has two different chromatids also called as sister chromatids also called as sister chromatid now one centromere now between the two chromatids the end center part between the two chromatids the center part is called as centromere that holds the two chromatids so there are chromatid number one chromatid number two between the two chromatids there is a centrally there is a centromere now divides the chrom divides the chromosome into a short p p arm short p arm and a long q arm the short arm is called as p arm long arm is called as q arm also called as primary constriction so what is primary constriction primary constriction is nothing but the centromere centromere here is the primary constriction now this primary constriction has a separate cover covering that is proteinaceous disc disc shaped structure on either side of the centromere on the either side of your centromere there is a sheet called as proteinaceous disc called as kinetochore kinetochore is completely covering the centromere it helps in the cell division now, based on the position of the centromere, the chromosomes can be classified into metacentric, where the chromosome is present in the center. So, P and Q arm are equal. There is submetacentric. In submetacentric, the centromere is towards one side. So, one is one short P arm, one long arm. 
then there is acrocentric in the case of acrocentric the centromere is almost towards one side right almost towards one side we have very short arm we have a very short arm here very short arm and a very long arm very long q arm in the case of telocentric the centromere at the terminal here near terminal but it is completely terminal here so there is in some cases the p arm is completely absent here in the case here centromere the p arm is completely absent only q arm can be present in the some cases that is but your ncrt is giving you the p arm okay completely absent that is nothing but the centromere that is the classification of different type of different types of chromosome now before i end the class i want everyone to know that if you're from the north india if you're from the north india that is student technical program is there that is for gna foundation uh, Gaurav Gupta sir is visiting a center that is you can refer other people and learn here become a Vedanta episode that is there is something in the description there is a surprise in the description you have to look in the description now one second students let me put nah, it is not opening it is not opening so students go to the description you will find it go to the description you will find it there is a link there please join that link you can find certain uh, you know referral programs where you can refer or you can tell the people about Vedantu and also there is an event happening if you are from North India in the Chinatpuri Garo Gupta sir is coming there you can also visit that also and apart from that apart from that you have you have three different jobs now the first job here is if you have any doubt I know this is a very you know this chapter is actually very easy chapter everything is statement based there is nothing to teach teach here this chapter is a very easy chapter nothing to teach teach all you need to do is write down remember a few points you will be done there is no concept based con things here very easy chapter now second point I want first point I would like to tell writers if you have any doubt in the chapter let me know in the comment section if you have any doubt regarding anywhere if I could not take any doubt if I could not take any doubt from the chat, let me know in the comment section. I will take up the doubt and I will solve the doubt on live. Okay, I'll, I'll solve the doubt in the comment section personally. Second thing I want all of you to know is how was the session? Because this was a different experience. This was a complete different experience altogether, right? This was different. So let me know in the section how was today's session because we wrote a lot today. We wrote a lot today. So let me know in the comment section how was the session, the writing part with me today. So with that being said, I will see you in the next class that is tomorrow. Tomorrow? Today is Thursday. No, I will see you day after tomorrow on Friday. So, did you play football today? No, I went to gym today. Ah, mistake, mistake. I went to gym today in the morning. That is why this whole tiredness is happening. But it's fine. We finished the entire chapter. Even though it was a little slow, even though it was a little, it was a little slow, we finished the entire chapter. So, today I did not do PYQs. Today I did not do PYQs because PYQs are present in the description. See students, this was a very long chapter. If I did the PYQs, it, was, it would have gone for even more longer time. Okay. It would have gone for a very longer time if I did the PYQs. That's why I skipped the PYQs. PYQs are in the description. And let me know in the comment section, you want the notes. Do you want the notes here? Tell me in the chat, do you want these notes? If you want these notes, I'll upload in the Telegram channel for all of you. So until then, take care all of you. And I'll see you in my next class. Okay.